walk in that path that leads to power, that leads to grace, that leads to increase. And we cry tonight that you will breathe upon us, help us, O oh God, throughout this session. Let us encounter Jesus and let us encounter your power. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Very quickly for this session, I'll be teaching on the laws of spiritual power. And I plead that you pay attention because these truths are the keys that I believe control um, an individual's excelling as far as walking in the power of God is concerned. We had a very brief discussion at dinner yesterday with pastor and I was just telling him that this subject of spiritual power has been one that for some reason many people truly desire and hunger for the power of God in their lives but for some reason they never really seem to step into the reality of that experience and everything written in scripture is for the benefit of the believer are we together it does not give God glory in withholding every possibility that can make the believer efficient. This includes the availability of sufficient spiritual power. And so I hope and pray that in this session, God would open our eyes and reveal to us the keys that truly control authority and power in this kingdom. Again, may I remind us that conferences like this are opportunities for God to open our eyes further to open our eyes to truth he says ride prosperously because of truth you do not ride prosperously just because you intend to it takes truth to give you advancement hallelujah um, this this message is dedicated to those who truly intend to walk in the power of God who are tired of status quo tired of a powerless Christian experience whether as a man of God as an ambassador of the kingdom generally speaking as a believer it takes power to really reveal Jesus hallelujah yesterday night we had a very brief session and we began our discourse from Genesis 1 for those of you who were not there yesterday let's do a quick recap for two or three minutes Genesis chapter 1 we started from verse 1 to 4 revealing God's definition of power and the scriptural reference that Genesis chapter 1 especially from verse 3 and 4 represents our ultimate pursuit as far as walking in power is concerned you know where to stop in your journey of the pursuit for genuine spiritual power when you attain unto this standard are we together 1 verse 1 says in the beginning God created the heavens or the heaven and the earth 2 it says now the earth was without form void darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters he says verse 3 and God said this is power now and God said and there was and God said and there was that means you truly are walking in power when you sustain the ability to say and it happens if you say and it does not happen you are not walking in power and God said and there was and then we did say that there is still a step further verse 4 that everything God said he saw that it was good so if it is God, you don't just see evil, you will see that it is good. If God says, he will see, and what he will see has to be good, because it is every good and perfect gift that comes from above. Is that true? Hallelujah. So we challenged ourselves that in Genesis 1 and verse 26, man was made in the image and the likeness of God. Remember yesterday? We said how that Adam was the first man to experience 
this holistic dimension of God in him to be created in the image and the likeness of God every other creature hitherto had been created in the likeness of God but not the image of God the image of God was his exclusive gift to man hallelujah praise the Lord and that since man was created in his image and in his likeness that means if God were true to say man was created in his image and likeness then man should be able to like God say and see what he said is that true do you agree with me hallelujah and the first test would happen with Adam the Bible says God brought the animals to Adam so that he would name them and we did say yesterday that naming them was not to give them scientific names it was science that did that job to name them means to give them their characteristic identity and the Bible says whatsoever Adam called it that was the name thereof consistent with that rule this must be the compass that guides us because every time in scripture you see this litmus test if you say and you see it is proof that there is power if you say and you do not see it is proof that something is wrong are we together now yes because many of us the area of our christian experience where we have been frustrated in principally is the lack of the manifestation of our desires especially the things that we say we make a lot of bold confessions in the name of jesus i am the head and not the tail in the name of jesus the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places i have authority over principalities and powers but our experiences don't seem to line up with those things and so this conference was designed to number one remind us that we are in the days of his power and then to show us the dynamics of truly walking in spiritual power and let me say this with a particular bias to men of God in the days that we live in we truly need power if our messages are not backed up with power then we will be prepared for empty pews because there are many options satan has been very intentional through the years in fabricating options many options in as much as our messages are powerful because they are the platforms for communicating doctrine we must sustain the grace to have power i made up my mind that i would never be a powerless believer number one two i would never be a powerless ambassador of the kingdom number three that i would never be a powerless man of god when you are a powerless man of god you will be jealous you will be angry you will fight you will hate yourself you will hate others from the lens of your frustration and many other things the baggages that come with being powerless is not worth it hallelujah so please pay attention as we share on the laws of spiritual power there are laws in this kingdom the laws of the kingdom guarantee um, and they make predictable the ways of God if God is to make the possibilities in the kingdom available to every believer without any prejudice then he must capture the workings of those possibilities in laws so that anyone could engage it and receive the results remember i think it was during um, the pastors and leaders conference if i'm right on that i thought that every time if you open the bible there are three things you are interacting with three realms of spiritual possibilities number one you are in, you are interacting with the promises of god contained in scripture are the promises of god number two contained in scripture are the principles of the kingdom number three contained in scripture are prophecies so every time you open your bible you are interacting with these three dimensions the promises of god a representation of his the boundary of his commitment to the believer number two 
the modus operandi of the kingdom called the mysteries or the secrets of the kingdom now when you are interacting with the promises of god you just need knowledge and then to sustain how to petition him based on those promises but when you are encountering or interacting with the principles of the kingdom you will need the spirit of wisdom because the principles of the kingdom are not all in plain sight some of them are hidden in parables some of them are hidden in stories you will need the spirit of wisdom to help you unravel a scripture would have profited you when you can draw the mystery out of it otherwise you'll just be reading a novel you're reading a story an interesting story a story that god was involved in it takes the holy spirit to be able to draw out the mystery that is hidden in that story and then number three of course is prophecy it's important for us to know that beyond this realm and beyond this time there are realities that will happen even after our dispensation the power of prophecy is that it gives you hope to know that even though i am not in the future yet i have seen the end are we together now because it is dangerous there's something called in our world the fear of the unknown every time the future is hazy it brings fear and so god being alpha omega goes to the end and reveals it to us that the end is victory regardless what happens the end is a life of victory and grace with christ directly with him in fellowship not just spiritually as we do now but that we will be with him be changed to become like him in that fullness and we will live together so this gives us hope now we are discussing the laws of the kingdom that every time you see the power of god activated in the life of a man predictably so in ever increasing measures there is no lock there there must have been an activation of you see mastery is measured in consistency no one is really reward for doing something professionally once you would have to do it for a long time are we together now yes he that strives for mastery the bible says is not crowned except he strives lawfully open our eyes in the name of jesus law number one that any believer who seeks to truly walk in power genuine spiritual power must subscribe to the law of spiritual illumination law number one the first spiritual law that controls the manifestation of power in the life of a believer is called the law of spiritual illumination genesis chapter 13 from verse 14 to 17 there is a relationship between your sight the light that comes from it translated translated to knowledge and then you're walking in power here's what he told abraham after lot had separated from him he said lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward southward eastward and westward 15 for the land which you see not the land which is available it is the one you see that i will give unto you and your descendants lift up your eyes and see the part of scripture that you see is the one i will give unto you not what i am able to do the one you see if you only see healer you can only reveal him as healer you will be surprised that you will be a powerful healer and you will be broke you will suffer as if jesus lied about prosperity because that is the area where you can see if you see him as the God that restores you will experience restoration and nothing else but restoration this is why he he defined the scope of your sight don't see northward alone 
don't see southward alone these are imbalances it says make sure you broaden the scope of your horizon see northward see southward see eastward don't just see a healer alone he's not only a healer you need to know him as a provider you need to know him as a lifter you need to capture as many dimensions of him that your sight can capture because as far as you can see it will be given to you it would have been better if it stopped with you but your descendants will also follow your plane of sight he says it is given to you and your descendants that means if i limit my view and my perspective about god everybody i mentor i will mentor from the lens of my limitation and they will follow suit lift up your eyes are we blessed now and see way make a miracle walk promise keeper light in the darkness my god all one person way make miracle walk let me give you an assignment dear bible student after this program before the evening service go online and search how many names of god are revealed in the bible from genesis to revelation i will not tell you praise the name of the lord find out how many names in nigeria they complain if they give you up to four names they say well, what is there ah, but it's too much two is okay your name and whatever you found as your father's name that's that's enough now here is god carrying names because a name is more than a means of identification a name is an accreditation this is who you are this is who you are again i want to stop but you are not stopping so i have to keep giving you names i keep giving you names the assignment of every generation is through their experience with god they should find a new name and add to the list of the names of god and if our generation does not contend deep enough with god to give him a name we should not just recycle the names we heard there are more names the name is a product and a capture of our experience with god until jacob came there was no god of jacob until abraham came there was no god of abraham <clears throat> so you have an assignment that through your lifetime you bring a name that you can hand over to your children and say this is a capture of the dimension of god that my whole lifetime it was like a research and at the end of my life here is my conclusion that he's more than this hallelujah the power of spiritual illumination what you see if you do not know that god can go this far you will not release your faith to see him go that far are we together yes in ephesians chapter 1 popular scripture from verse 15 we read and here we see paul ephesians 1 from verse 15 paul praying over the church in ephesus ephesians 1 and verse 15 and he was praying a very very deep and a very spiritual prayer over it says therefore i also after i heard of your faith in the lord jesus notice all the things he's hearing about your faith in the lord jesus christ and your love for all the saints next verse it says i do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayer 17 that the god of our lord jesus christ even the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him uh-huh the eyes of your understanding being enlightened amplified says flooded with light that ye may know you see that now ye may know and understand the hope which he has called you and how rich is glorious inheritance in the saints he set apart once 19 he says so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believed as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength 
which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead now you know what he's saying he's praying that you understand the extent of power that is available to you as a believer and he's saying that same power what was what was used to raise Jesus from the dead the same power given to the believer it takes light and it takes knowledge to be able to walk in spiritual power this is very important psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7 another popular scripture the bible says they know not so this is a knowledge problem neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes why they know not neither will they understand they know not that god lifts they know not that god restores they know not that god can favor they know not that in him you can find speed they know not that there is dominion over principalities and powers they know not neither will they understand it is important that we trust God for the spirit of illumination to be able to open us up there is a direct relationship between the knowledge of the Word of God not just the Word of God the knowledge of what is written and your experience as far as power is concerned it will not happen to you just because it is written it will happen when you know that it is written it is when the light comes that you arise not when the light is there it must come to you just because the power holding company has light does not mean darkness will go away from your house until the light that is with the power holding company gets to your house that is when it profits you so you find solace in knowing that there is light there your next assignment is to find a way of connecting with the light that is there no matter the distance from their office or their station to your house there is nobody who frowns at the effort of drawing light from anywhere to his house have you seen someone getting angry and say my house is too far no no matter how far if it means to put pole wires if it means to use a generator whatever effort you do it with pride the most important thing is that there must be light in your house and you smile with joy as you see everywhere illuminated this is how it must be you must draw that truth from wherever it is until it gets to your life are we blessed i submit to you truthfully that our generation is largely very ignorant we say a lot of things that we do not understand job 42 and verse 3 this is a lesson for many of us job was also a victim of that job 42 and verse 3 behold job 42 42 and verse 3 42 and verse 3 It says, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? It says, therefore I have uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. I was just speaking, speaking, speaking about things I did not understand. Speaking about things I did not know. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. And the realm of the spirit is saying, if you really knew what you were saying. Do you know what it means for him to be the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley what is a lily doing in a valley that is a miracle and yet you say it the lily of the valley means he can become anything in any valley in any wilderness whatsoever knowledge 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 we will continue to embarrass ourselves as believers until we contend for light high level spiritual illumination if all the lights in this beautiful auditorium were put off and you just light your phone there is light there but not enough to turn the night to day you must have light enough to turn your night 
today john chapter 1 and verse 5 it says the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah light when you have sufficient light you will be able to see why do you use headlamps even though you have eyes in the night it is the presence of the headlamps if your light goes bad even if your eyes are good you are in trouble is that true your sight depends on the illumination it is in your light that we see light so it is possible that what you see is darkness if the light that comes to you is not true light he said that was the true light that means there must be false light that was the true light that lighted every man is God speaking to us one more scripture and then we'll rush quickly to the next point Mark chapter 8 Mark chapter 8 from verse 22 very interesting story Mark chapter 8 and verse 22 Jesus now he cometh to Bethsaida and they bring a blind man unto him listen look up please did you know that there were certain people in scripture who were not healed in Jesus's ministry but there was no single blind man that Jesus left blind Jesus took the issue of blindness personal everywhere he saw a blind man he insisted that he was healed there were 10 leprous people they went 10 were healed only one was whole you see that he didn't call the remaining nine to say they are not whole return back let me make you whole but for this blind man watch what jesus did they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him next verse and he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town and when he had spit on his eyes he put his hands on him and asked and asked him if he saw aught Here's what the man said he looked up and said i see but here is what i see i see men as trees i see prosperity but i see it as a burden i see it as a cause i see the healing ministry but i see it as something that is past and jesus said we need to correct your understanding i'm still going to perform i'm not ashamed to do it again where did you find in the bible where he did the same miracle twice on one person we're talking of the mighty god but with respect to the opening of your eyes i will do it as many times till you see well that means just because you studied it yesterday you need to study again to see what you saw yesterday began the journey but may not take you so far jesus is teaching us a lesson with the opening of the blind eye that when it has to do with blindness lay hands and verify what is seen just because the man is saying i see it will be a risk to leave the person what do you see he said i see men but i see them as trees that means based on my viewpoint i don't know the difference between men and trees if you ask this man to write a book on vision imagine what he's going to write is that true he will tell you based on his theology that a man and a tree are two the same are, are two things and that trees can walk and men also can walk that trees are re re related to man, to men this is based on his theology and he will be right because that's what he's saying except that what he's saying is not all that there is so jesus performed this miracle and afterwards he put his hand again upon his eyes and made him to look up and he was restored and he saw every man clearly and he saw every mystery clearly and he saw every dimension of god clearly someone lay your hands on your eyes and declare lord open up tear up that veil let me see clearly let me see clearly i saw something last year during activate conference but let me see clearly i saw something about the healing ministry i saw something about your power but let me see clearly clearly 
I saw something about the prophetic ministry but let me see clearly I saw something about worship the ministry of prophetic psalmistry but let me see clearly someone is praying for everyone that asketh receive it man of God I saw something about ministry and church growth and the power of God to lift men but let me see clearly if Jesus was not embarrassed to lay hands on the man a second time as God then we must not be ashamed to pray let me see again let me see again hallelujah praise the name of the Lord listen let me tell you something the beats that I know and I've seen in ministry I have learned a very very powerful lesson in ministry that at any level there is truly so much more than we know and if we do not sustain the grace to cry for the miracle of greater light we will camp around a dimension of God and build a monument around that dimension whereas there is northwards southwards he would have just said lift your eyes but he said no if you are looking this way you can't see what is behind but there is something behind if you are looking left you can say there is only one screen in this auditorium you are right based on your vision you are wrong based on the truth you see the fact is what is what based on your vision but the truth is what is based on God's standpoint Acts chapter 18 is God helping us this morning remember you came to church this is the house of God Acts chapter 18 let's start from verse 24 very briefly reading quickly and then we'll move to the next point this was a very very interesting story that we blessed my life many years ago and taught me that no matter how far you go in God there are greater dimensions as far as understanding the ways of God is concerned Acts 18 from verse 24 and a certain Jew named Apollos the Bible says he was born at Alexandria an eloquent man a mighty man in scripture he came to Ephesus the place of knowledge this man was instructed in the way of the Lord the Bible says he was fervent in spirit he spake and taught that means he was not just a student he had risen to a point where he was accredited to even be a teacher he spake and taught diligently in the things of the Lord but there was a limitation please read the last sentence you see they ready one to read stop 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 knowing only <laughs> leave whatever he knows only that that's not our concern knowing only the fact that the bible recognizes that this eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture yet knowing only knowing only great apostle joshua selman mighty in this but knowing only you see that verse 26 the bible says he began to speak boldly so take note everything he's saying is only everything he's saying is only he began to speak boldly in the synagogue whom when aquila and priscilla had heard him the bible says they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of the lord more perfectly they didn't say you are talking nonsense but i, I can imagine how happy they were listening to him shouting and sweating on stage and they were impressed but they say oh dear look at the gaps in this man's understanding after the service he thought they came for prayer and they came and said look we love you we were impressed with that message but come sit down there is something we need to show you this is a lesson dear preachers it's not everybody who is being impressed with what we're saying there are people who are standing from a high altitude in the spirit and watching how we walk like toddlers 
in this realm you, you see them watch with humility and sometimes they are very humble and they, they appreciate us but if our hearts are open they can show us the way of the kingdom more perfectly I would learn this lesson in a very dramatic way in Kano many years ago I went to Kano you've heard the story ministering under the power of God and I gave a word of knowledge about this dear woman and she came out very unassuming and I said mama I want to pray for you the Lord tells me you are an intercessor she said yes and she said apostle I finish my Bible every 15 days that was her covenant with God 15 days she finishes this Bible every 15 days and I stood there with the protocol standing by me with the mic and I'm saying okay I have seen Jesus oh this man talking to you I've seen the lion of the tribe of Judah and I'm standing before this woman who is humble ready to receive prayer from this man of God and the man of God is standing there with the awareness that this one there is a knowing only somewhere here if you read your Bible in 15 days let me tell you this it is not that you are a good reader is you have dominion you don't know the kind of spirits that fight your study of the word you will be able to finish a novel four times as big as the Bible even in one week but the grace to read the Bible and start again you have overcome almost any temptation any man can get it is not about going from Genesis to Revelation you try it <laughs> You will keep repenting in that journey because of how you will backslide and disappoint yourself. Lord, I'm sorry you will fast again and try it and go back and try it and go back and you may do well and pass Genesis, get to Leviticus and say, what in the world is going? You will go back, you will back. Oh dear. So for a woman to finish in 15 days, I didn't tell you it was a Hausa Bible was not a bible with pictures and images to encourage you while you are going on some intelligent commentary somewhere that just supports your study the house of bible is all that is there is just the scripture straight as you are reading you continue moving can i tell you this every time i come for a meeting like this in as much as god is using me to bless his people i am aware there are, there are also anointings within that meeting and i've programmed my spirit that lord whilst i am preaching if for any reason my spirit man picks any grace that i need i've programmed my spirit in partnership with the holy ghost to draw it to my life quietly while i'm teaching i know what to do with it when i leave that place so a man can finish preaching and know that he did not leave empty is strange everything he brought left but he still returned full because while he was releasing what god gave him there was discernment you can be here and while you are teaching god is teaching you something while you are preaching concurrently it's when you go back you say i hope you learned what i taught you he will act as if you were not preaching I wish I were lying I would have just apologized and said let's be serious but I am very serious about what I'm saying are we blessed knowing only the moment you know this the secret is to assume the position of a student forever and never be ashamed the moment you confront a dimension that you do not know do not be ashamed it is this pride and this arrival mentality especially for some of us that god has helped a bit you know we've seen a few results here and there chances are that you can be so embarrassed when you see an area you know nothing about that's why it's safe to be on your knees permanently so that whatever meets you there you don't have to from that exalted position now embarrassingly kneel down just kneel down by default knowing that something will come that will require me kneeling down to receive law number two we have to hurry up are we blessed do not forget 
you must pay attention to knowledge look northwards some of you have been looking northwards for 10 years god is saying when will you start looking at other dimensions some of you have been looking southwards this represent different dimensions and god said look northward southward eastward westward capture all of the dimensions of these possibilities so that you can be a maximum blessing as far as dispensing the power of god is concerned hallelujah number two the second spiritual law that governs the manifestation of power in the life of a believer now please pay attention this is a very important law it's called the law of submission the law of submission james chapter 4 and verse 7 please james chapter 4 and verse 7 please read with me let's read as a church ready one to read please submit yourselves therefore to god did you say full stop there full stop submit yourselves therefore to god then it now says resist the devil from the standpoint of that submission and he leaves you with an assurance consistent with genesis remember resist the devil and he will flee from you so when you resist the devil and he does not flee the problem may not be the devil the problem may be from the position you are resisting him are you getting what i'm saying now he says submit yourselves therefore remember the intention is to be free from the devil but he says start by submitting yourself therefore unto god and then resist the devil and he will flee from you write this down you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you you are only as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you please look up if i told you right now or if you saw a picture of me and the u.s secretary of state would that make any effect or would that create any effect on your perception let's assume you've been trying to look for a u.s visa and you see me snap with the u.s consular general here in nigeria and probably the one in charge of africa and then you see me snap again with the secretary of state would you want to know me would you respect me why because the fact that i have this level of proximity with them enough to to have a photo it tells you that you can leverage on that relationship when people say they are close to government or close to power as we call it even if we don't like them we seem to respect them you are as powerful as your relationship with the authority that sends and backs you is concerned so every time spiritual power is far from your life is also telling us the level of your relationship with the authority that sent you and the authority that backs you in every nation there are people who even though regardless their political office we say this one is close to the president this one is close to the prime minister and you will be surprised that the official person you were to meet you can bypass that person because you are looking for results you can even meet a little girl simply because she's the president's daughter is that true and you are talking with her whereas officially there was a route to follow and the lady says okay let me talk to my daddy for you and she talks and says i spoke to my father and he said come and see him tomorrow and everybody is angry you didn't follow the right way so well he has asked me to come are you getting the point now listen to me submission is a very powerful mystery that has not been understood in the body of christ 
that there is no individual who sustains the power within himself now i have taught here if i recall that the the nature of the dominion that we have been given as believers is not absolute dominion there are two levels of dominion there is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion is that true yes so the the dominion that the saints have received is not absolute dominion is shared dominion shared dominion is like the light you have in your house you have light but it depends the the power holding company does not depend on you for light they generate it you have light and you can even help somebody within the limit of your partnership with them is that true the day a relationship goes sour with them what happens jesus revealed the power of submission in matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 8 let's hurry up please matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 matthew 8 from verse 5 very instructive let's follow carefully when jesus was entered into capernaum the bible says there came to him a centurion a centurion will be the equivalent of a captain are we together and beseeching him what did he say verse 6 saying lord my servant lieth home sick of the palsy grievously tormented next verse and jesus said unto him i will come and heal him that means i give you that honor i'm going to go all the way and come to your house and then this man shocks jesus with a very profound statement that is a lesson for us are you ready the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only does this look like genesis 1 verse 3 to 4 is there something that man knew speak the word only and my servant shall be healed because if it is god when he says it he will see it is that true next verse this is what supported his understanding for i am a man under authority that means this protocol is not strange by reason of my work with the army i understand authority and the power that comes through submission i am a man under authority in this case the authority of the roman government having soldiers also under me so you will have people under you and things under you to the degree to which you are under an authority everything will be above you if you are alone this man is teaching something powerful i first i first came under authority then as a result of that i now have soldiers under me because there is a threefold purpose of authority number one provision number two protection number three promotion this is the purpose of authority number one provision making the resources for your excelling available number two promotion by providing accreditation and leverage number three protection a system of defense while you go i am a man under authority having soldiers under me now watch this by reason of the authority i say to this man there you go and he goeth genesis 1 verse 3 3 and 4 again are you seeing the pattern now i am under authority so when i say I expect compliance I can say to one come so when you are under authority it gives you the power to say go and it gives you the power to say come are we together now and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it verse 10 Jesus heard it and marveled I didn't see you in any of my lectures who taught you this where did you learn this irrefutable secret of the kingdom that in your submission is your greatness that in your submission is your power that it is on the strength of your submission to authority that every other thing under you will hear you too 
that means before anything under you obeys it will check whether there is something you are obeying to you see when jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily verily i say unto you he says i have not found so great faith no not in israel i have not found this construction this understanding authority when jesus came he announced that he was the son of god there was a name jesus never called himself throughout his earth work he never said i am god no i do not find it in the bible number two he never said i am father two words really jesus never called himself father when he walked upon the earth even though he was equal with god he called the holy ghost father he called his father father but he never called himself father he remained son which is the reason why everything hurt him because when he walked upon the earth he continued to let them know that i am under the authority of the father this is what the centurion understood so when the demon saw him they said we are seeing a 33 year old body but you are the ancient of this he said keep quiet i'm the son the moment i say i am father they are now authorized to rebel against me because they i i violate the law of submission can i tell you this submission frees you from the responsibility of backing yourself up it is it is painful to try to back yourself up if the centurion tells you go and you do not go you did not disobey him you disobeyed the government that backs him it now the government now will bring their full weight on you is that true so when god sends you and you go as a man of god you are in trouble it looks very very consoling but now you are left alone to defend yourself but if you go as one sent the son of the living god you see why peter got it right i know who you are he would have said you are god he said mm -mm. i know who you are based on your exploits you have come as son and the government that backs you is headed by the living god and jesus said that's it you got it behold what manner of love the father says that the father has bestowed upon us the bible says that we be called what sons you do not do exploits as father read your bible exploits is not for father fathers back those who do the exploits exploits is for sons hmm. are we blessed when jesus went to pray he didn't say god we are one so just listen quietly just because i'm on earth here doesn't mean that don't forget i'm still aware I'm, it's only 33 years here no he went and said our father teaching us how to pray in john 17 when he was praying himself the bible says he lifted up his eyes to heaven john 17 and verse 1 and he began to pray to the father can i tell you this return to the reality of sonship with the consciousness that there is an authority that backs you you see how children behave the moment you try to threaten them they verify whether their father is there with them and they can do all kinds of things for you in the presence of their father whether they are right or wrong you will deal with them at home but as far as that you have to protect that child for your namesake this is a very powerful key every time i minister I minister as touching this understanding that I'm a sent one number one but that there is an authority that backs me demons will verify it Jesus I know Paul I know who are you who are you does not mean where are you coming from who are you means where is the government that is backing you when david wanted to go and fight goliath read your bible ladies and gentlemen there was only one question saul asked him saul did not say um uh, okay i see that you're a fine young man give me the antecedents what have you killed mm -mm. he said whose son are you that's all i want to know let me know what lineage you are connected to because every lineage has its advantage whose son are you oh the benjamite go ahead 
but I can help you with my armor. He said, no, no, no. Since you agreed that I'm a Benjamite, leave me and see the advantage that that tribe brings. And when he stood before Goliath, Goliath, listen to me, Goliath stood and cursed them in the name of his God. Even as powerful as Goliath was, the secret was he submitted. He, he did not walk, he did not curse them because he was mighty. He cursed them in the name of the authority that gave him that strength. Can I tell you this? Your ministry will step into another dimension. Your life will step into another dimension if you walk conscious of the fact that there is a government in heaven and you must be vocal and let people see and know that this man standing is only representing a higher spiritual parliament the god of the universe so when you speak to demons before they leave they verify let's check what is the submission system it's like an entry code the moment it is there they will leave is why you see ordinary men doing things that men cannot do why because it is not done by the men the men are only conduits let me tell you something there are some results men cannot produce it is not within the realm of men to do certain things are we together you must make up your mind today to walk in the consciousness of your submission this is the reason why that extension even in a church like this you will be surprised how you can ignore the man of God that God has placed over you and you will be surprised that even though you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit there are certain cheap possibilities that this ministry carries as a mantle you may never walk in it every time you see people who are supposedly connected to you and the grace on you is difficult to flow to them I can tell you something is questionable about the submission even if they kneel down even if it's a good afternoon good there are there are graces that come with authorities both heavenly and earthly authorities there are some things as a member of the house on the rock you should never struggle with no not excellence no not influence these are graces that come is is an allocation like mineral resources but there are people who can be within that place and yet not enjoy it and strangers can come with that understanding and tap into it in a moment and walk in it is someone learning have you raised people in your house and your own children are not experiencing the spiritual advantage of those people they come as strangers discerning and here you have this naughty children well god is changing them in jesus name but here you have these people who don't discern that daddy is also ceo and you see people come and they tap into that possibility can i tell you this you must be very discerning when it has to do with the subject of authority a woman can be married to a man who has the grace for influence and she may never have a job for years yet that man has been responsible for giving many people jobs the reason is because she's still seeing him as her husband the day she sees that in addition to my being your husband there is an authority that backs you and since i'm under that authority i place a demand There was a time they wanted to beat paul paul didn't say i'm a christian he said listen i'm a pharisee look i i tap into the immunity that comes with my son i'm not i'm a child of god but with respect to the punishment that is about to come i am also a pharisee do not forget give me my immunity as a pharisee you know what it means to be a pharisee it's a lab laborious season of learning and climbing and defending yourself he said just because god called me don't you think i forgot I, 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 i'm a pharisee i know all of you before i met jesus christ i was a senior colleague to all of you don't downplay me i am a pharisee and everybody brought they brought themselves back to order someone needs to walk to the devil and say listen to me first i am a child of god there is the authority that backs me are we together and then walk conscious 
of the privileges that you have truly i believe that there are some things that cannot happen to me as a person it may sound arrogant forgive me but it's what i believe and i don't intend to change it i really believe that there are some things that cannot happen to me you want to tell someone be healed and he returns healed you want to tell someone in the name of jesus i release you let doors be open or you want your own door to be open can i tell you sincerely portacot is a place of plenty portacot is a place of glory portacot is a place of lifting if you don't believe it refer to my first point and then come back to this point and now understand that it is true but the authority politicians have taught us when you want to enter certain circles they say let me show where is the paper who sent you here there are doors that don't open by appointment they open by the authority that accredited you there are jobs in this nation that does they don't publicize there are companies they don't publicize you never know that it is open the fact that you are not aware is a sign that there is nobody helping you it's not hidden it's not bribery they will tell you where is your referral so you find out that they've taken 70 people and you're wondering in my presence i believe in the power of the holy spirit i believe in the government of heaven that can back men i do not believe that anyone will sit under this atmosphere as i minister and go back the same this is why you hear me say those things i would be arrogant and even stupid to be talking by my own strength as a man of god but you 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 wait until you see the government that defends these things that we say we are not empty talkers he said open his eyes so that he will see and stop this nonsense fear that he's talking up and down we are about to die and he opened his eyes he saw surrounding that entire mountain there were angels this was the revelation Elisha caught. My father, my father, the chariots of horsemen, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Do you know what that means? You alone, you are equivalent to the entire defense system of Israel. What kind of mantle is this that you are carrying? He said you can have it. Now that you have that revelation. Mortal men, awesome God. I'm a mortal man, awesome God. Ordinary man, yet a supernatural God. You know, many times when I'm going for meetings, especially crusades, I just see people praying. When I came in yesterday, as late as I came, I saw people shouting and rejoicing. And in my mind, I'm saying, oh dear, oh dear. Do I not deserve to be arrested if I just came on my own? To have wasted these people's time by what authority do you believe that the sick will be healed that lives will be transformed veterans of the gospel many of you here have left your busy schedule to just sit down under this grace would it not be arrogance for me to stand and believe that you will be blessed just by my speaking as a man no but i give you one assurance this government you see that backs us is a powerful government is the reason why we can call on the nations and tell them come and see what he's doing and not be afraid you know why because we are aware of the governance of this government we are aware of the power of that kingdom but we've been granted the privilege to see that government in action america may keep quiet over some of these nations and warn them gently be careful we will bring sanctions and we'll deal with you just because they have been polite does not mean it's fear. By the time they are talking, they've studied the entire security system and found all the loopholes there. And in one day, they can come and capture everything, crumble their economy and teach them a lesson. This is how God is. So you can see a man gentle as a dove. And yet when the power of God comes, someone who has been in captivity for 10 years, just one moment don't ask the question how did this happen uh -uh. understand that there is an invisible but real government real government real government 
let me have two or three of the protocol guys we're about to pray just or any three gentlemen please just come up thank you three or four of you i want to teach you something don't forget this there are many things that happen to a man when god calls you number one god gives you a mandate when god gives you that mandate listen carefully number two god gives you the backing number three god gives you access to resources both human and material number four god gives you the platform don't don't forget this every time god calls you these are the things he gives you number one he gives you the mandate the message a representation of the dimension of him committed to you number two the backing the government that protects defends and validates that you were sent number three he gives you access to resources human and material resources and then number four he gives you the platform if you do not have these four things go back to it for a retreat and verify whether you were called this is what happens the more you walk with God so I'm called into ministry and here is the angelic and spiritual backing the defense system of heaven that works with me by reason of this there are results I can produce but clearly you see the limitation as I grow in my relationship with this government part of the rewards that are given to me every time a new anointing comes upon a man among the things that happen is that there is a greater defense system from heaven a greater backing from heaven are we together so now both of you follow me now you are not seeing them it is only me so when i come for your conference the person who was not healed last year now is healed this year and you are wondering what changed this is what changed a heavier backing from heaven by the time i remain conscious of my submission you knew me five years ago by the time you see me five years later you are thinking this man alone but it's been added now watch this come gentlemen please stand around this pulpit just stand here just stand here just stand here you are going to lift it gently so we hold it here watch this assuming you are not seeing them come sir join them you are not seeing them i'm the only one you are seeing is that true now watch my hand say miracle worker say powerful man drop it down again what sort of a powerful man is this you say but this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit now watch this come now i called you for a conference i said go and bring every sick person look at the level of backing i have i'm about to be embarrassed true or false are you seeing why we must grow because now look at the weight i didn't measure my size spiritually this is where premature manifestation is dangerous we are all men of god you are about to disgrace yourself in a very painful way now look at the kind of load i want to carry before everyone ready let's attempt don't break it and so i try and you are wondering jesus is mentioned the bible was opened prayer happened what happened the government is writing through my limitation this is a letter from heaven you need to come closer to this government because the way the economy of this system works is the greater the relationship the greater the backing now there are men who are so am i boring you add two more gentlemen because god is revealing your spiritual state two more i like these hefty people ah, no, no, no. <laughs> now watch this add two more gentlemen two more gentlemen come come anyone whether protocol or not just come follow me everywhere i go there are people who are like this just follow me i'm going on a crusade ground follow me now all of you very quickly let's lift this as fast as we can come I've not even laid my hands and it's lifted are you seeing this now I didn't touch this I wanted to but before I would touch it it is the extent of the backing which is a product of the submission 
look how long they are keeping it waiting i'm not even near it now you are not seeing them man of god this is the secret and everybody's watching apostle you must be a mystery you be this has been hanging for 10 minutes no it is not the man it is the, look at the size of this man please drop it down sirs. stand here again i do not want you to forget this for the rest of your life come close to me now we are going to act a one minute drama come gentlemen come and try to fight me all right you come just do your best guys defend me now hold on hold on hold on <laughs> let's start with this man you try to fight me come you can overpower him so you see i can be a victim because this guy is clearly is that true but you go back come now all of you remember how you always stand now i'm the only one he's seen but he does not know what is in front of him you come come watch this watch this keep pushing he's stubbornly trying he believes after two years he will succeed oh what what a wasted effort I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my listen to me is it not a reality in your places of work that when they promote you there are certain things that come with that promotion there is a level you get to they give you an official car there is a level you get to they give you an orderly there is a level you get to where there is now a heightened security system there is a level you get to where the door answers to only you it uses your fingerprint go and try to enter the asso rock and then you will know that it is a secured place go and try to enter the white house believers hear me i'm not wasting your time believe me we're going to pray for some of you this is all you have for 10 years you have refused to understand this submission no matter what your titles are called bishop apostle that's not what the realm of the spirit believes your submission whereas look at what was destined for you this is the kind of backing that was supposed to follow your mandate this is the kind of backing that was supposed to follow your business this is the load you want to lift some of you don't even have any backing you are alone you've been struggling for 10 years getting jealous and getting angry and say no anybody that lifts this must be a demonic person no refer to point one spiritual illumination the miracle of open eyes to see that if this thing is ever lifted if the sick are ever healed that you hear someone say oh the power of god is touching someone now it is not magic this is what happens in the realm of the spirit do you know my prayer for you that you build such stamina in the spirit come close gentlemen that you get this kind of battle come as close as you can to me watch this look at this level of spiritual fortification now he can send you if he sends you anywhere you can go he can send you to governments to presidents and you come in the name of the lord in the name of the government that backs you someone you need to relinquish trying to go in your name ask the prodigal son he's taught us a lesson for as long as he was under the authority of his father there was no lack there was no fear but the moment he left his father and was under his own authority he began to plunge until he stayed with swine businessman hear me 
preacher hear me this is the voice of the spirit to you if you are waiting for time to change this nothing will happen you will need to submit hallelujah can you spare me 10 more minutes i need to teach you how we submit in this kingdom because if i just wrap up like this there is the third law but i'll probably leave it for evening so that we'll just use it and just move to the miracle service but never forget this never forget this lord a greater backing a greater backing a greater backing this is my prayer i have seen this in the realm of the spirit this is what gives me confidence i don't just travel to go no sir i don't know the challenges that are here right now i don't know the problems of people here except you want to fake this thing can i tell you if this power is not there it is not there you can give explanations you can give all kinds of things when the backing is there one last time gentlemen we're going to lift this are you ready this can be financial limitation this can be whatever in ministry god is saying come on to me all you that are weary look how easy i can lift it jesus is talking to someone stop running around trying to look for fame and go back and submit to his authority in your submission is your immunity in your submission is your strength you will lift many loads now you are not seeing these people you are the one that the world will see behind these exploits impossible feats by the hand of god please drop it down pray in one minute everyone gentlemen may the lord honor you and bless you let's give them a big hand clap as we pray thank you sirs pray in one minute and ask the Lord to help you that you have to submit to his authority are we praying hallelujah let me wrap up with this scripture Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 and verse 36 Matthew 26 and verse 36 please bring for me the people who start running out right now by the anointing while these people were lifting this I started seeing very strange angelic manifestations for one of them you had a dream in that dream it's like you saw me laying hands on you this is what happened in the dream the power of God is going to come upon you right now there are a few of them and some of them will start running by the anointing hold them please bring them out very quickly please bring them quickly we're going to pray I want to teach you this Matthew chapter 26 very quickly please <laughs> this is Jesus let me show you how submission happens in the kingdom. Please hold them so they don't injure themselves. There is a woman here. God is opening the prophetic dimension for you. There is an anointing coming on you right now as I'm speaking. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, do not be discouraged that he is going to use you very mightily. It will start with heightened dreams, prophetic experiences and encounters help them please this is what the lord is saying supernatural prophetic encounters of the spirit this is not some showmanship please god is in a serious business of helping us to understand it is the backing of heaven the backing of heaven over your life when you say it remember and it happens it is proof that there is authority and power please help them i just acted something for you here that is a very accurate picture of what happens in the realm of the spirit so that now you understand that these things do not just happen believe me when i tell you it does not fail we are talking of the power of god the power of god we are going to round up but now while you bring them out just pay attention to this 
the bible says then come at jesus with them to a place called gethsemane help this woman please this is god's idea of submission pay attention hallelujah Victoria 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 we have to work with time I'm hearing a name Victoria Victoria you are wearing a yellow veil like a yellow cloth a yellow veil is there someone like that Victoria please verify so that we Oh, very what's her name from where hallelujah because i'm seeing that the lord is bringing a visitation where where's your family here i want to pray for you you believe in the power of god in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands captivity goes now out now in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God can I tell you some of you what you are seeing tonight God is transporting it into your life and into your ministry into your various assemblies I'm telling you this by the spirit of the living God power you call it the days of his power the days of his power um, is there someone who, is it Ekene or Ekanem something like that what's your name Come, what's your name? Huh? I can't see Come. Look at me. You believe in the power of God? What do you do? You are a pastor. Because you are going to step into this man, there is an evangelistic grace on you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be the same by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's finish this, please. Look up, please. The Bible says, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. While standing, let's pay attention. Number two, he took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to sorrow and was very heavy. The beginning of the process of his passion now. Number three, he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry here and watch with me while he's praying now next verse he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying now look up please this is the hallmark of submission in the kingdom father if it be possible this is my own agenda this is what i want to do nevertheless not as i will but as thou will the Bible says when you read the other verses, he prayed it again. That means the hallmark of submission in this kingdom is when you get to a point where you lose the ability to tell God no. Lord, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I want to do with my money. This is what I want to do with my brain. This is what I want to do with my destiny. However, I submit to you. Whatever you want is what I will do. Where whatever you say is what I will do. Can I tell you this? You are not truly submissive if you still have a will of your own to fight God. Whatever God wants to do, if it can be done in your life, you have contacted, the, you have stepped into the realm of genuine spiritual power. I'm going to pray for you. We have a service in the evening. Please hear me. Do not forget my teaching on submission many of us are trying to use god stop only saying god i want to go left and i am intelligent i went to school and he says i will respect you but if it is power you will not see it when you want to see power with god you must get to a point where you have no agenda of your own that agenda is to see him revealed and to see him glorified and even if it will cost you you are that willing to say lord your will be done therefore we are going to pray one prayer right now father like abraham laying down isaac i lay down my will for yours 
go ahead use me as you wish let Jesus be glorified through my life go ahead and pray wave your hands to Jesus in surrender your all I want your all I've ever Listen to me. For some of you, this is the financial mountain standing before you. You have done everything you know to do. Apostle, I'm a contractor. Leave the issue of contract now. We are not talking contract. We are talking relationship with a government. That's what will supply the backing and the favor. Apostle, I'm a man of God. It's because of my location. That's why church is not growing. It's not true. It is because of the low level of the backing. When you are really backed by God, even in the wilderness, God will send men. When Gideon submitted to the authority of the Lord, he blew a trumpet and 32,000 people from everywhere they came. everything that has not been working in your life today it might be because it is lack of submission but i have come here by the privilege of god's grace under the leadership of your pastor let me speak over someone's life believe me when i tell you what i say will come to pass remember what i taught you we do not speak empty words there is a government that backs what we do i speak right now every door I declare, may that door be open now. Open now. Everything distracting you, making God look like an interruption to your advancement distracting your hunger for God distracting your fire for spiritual things I cause it now by the God of heaven in your submission is the lifting of your ministry in your submission another word for submission is surrender in your surrender is your greatness some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears in your submission and your surrender is your relevance man of god you will not become relevant just because you are traveling around no your relevance is tied to your surrender your prosperity in the kingdom is tied to your surrender now let me pray for those in front in the name of jesus christ he's brought you out by his spirit step into a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now please let me encourage you whatever it is that you need to do to make sure you are here tonight with your family members if you can explain to them that there is a move of the Spirit in this place there are overflows even if there's no space climb the zinc and sit there but whatever it is because tonight I'm going to be praying for people and one of the graces one of the things i believe will happen tonight we are discussing power there will be an impartation of graces listen that dimensions you did not function in hitherto by the privilege of the grace of god you know a man of god who needs to be here you know a businessman who needs to be here you know someone who is is within town and needs to be here Please, i want you to call them this is not about um, you know just trying to come and honor a man this is Jesus Christ wanting to reach people you know people families with impossible situations please give them a chance to experience the power of God it is important for us to explore by the spirit and through knowledge the vast possibilities that are contained in the Christ so that we do not limit him based on our perception it is true that God can do all things but we must walk with the Holy Spirit and the Word to know how far all things can be. 
so that we can then believe is that true hallelujah number two we looked at the law of submission according to james chapter 4 and verse 7 it says to submit yourself before the mighty hand of god and then it says to resist the devil from that standpoint of submission and he assures you that he will flee matthew chapter 8 from verse 5 the encounter with jesus and the centurion he said for i am a man under authority and i can say to one with the consciousness of the authority that i'm under go and he will go come and he will come do this and he will do that and so he said jesus you need not come to my house speak the word only because those who are under authority reign with their words speak and your servant will be healed and one of the synoptic accounts said jesus told him go and that self same hour the child was healed hallelujah the last of the three laws very important the law of faith the law of faith hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 three spiritual laws that control the flow of power in this kingdom the first being the law of spiritual illumination the word of god number two submission the authority of the kingdom that your strength is derived from your submission and may i remind us that the hallmark of submission in this kingdom is when you lose the ability to say no to god if you still have the privilege and the luxury of negating what you know god desires for you to do you are not truly submissive because it's proof that you do not trust him the bible says i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah the way of the lord always leads to rest the way of the lord always brings you to your sabbath it may not look like it but the way of the lord always leads to rest number three the law of faith hebrews 11 and verse 6 paul is speaking and he says but without faith without faith means outside of the realm of faith it is not possible there is no possibility to please god he says for he that cometh to god must come believing two rules number one that he exists you first have to believe that he is not an idol that he is god and he is alive he is number two that he is the rewarder that means you must have at the back of your mind that your pursuit and your coming to god has value always do you know why because the bible says blessed is the man who god causes to approach him you have to understand that there is a labor dimension to seeking god so he gives you an information so you do not feel cheated seeking god for a long time will make you look like a fool he says remember he's a rewarder let that understanding give you the staying power while you seek him for many years people will go ahead of you while you seek him for many years he will interrupt so many things in your life but every time the devil wants to use your passion to make you feel that you have missed out in life you are reminded by this truth that he is the rewarder not them that carelessly seek him them that diligently seek him he pays attention to the attitude too are we together faith is very important in this kingdom if you want to receive from god you have to understand the law of faith and there are two dimensions to this law that i would want to discuss as far as the administration of the power of god is concerned i'm not necessarily teaching it as that that doctrine i want to open you up to the law of faith as regards the transmission of god's power now listen there is only one instance recorded in scripture where jesus remember let me make reference to yesterday night and then even this morning remember our standard and our benchmark our definition of spiritual power based on scripture genesis chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4 that for you to be said to have spiritual power the highest level and the highest manifestation of spiritual power recorded in scripture is the capacity to say and to see it happen and that what happens is good 
don't forget that no matter what you have and you show to be power if you do not have the ability to use words to create realities that are good you have not gotten to that reference so this is what we aim at in this conference that god will bring us to a point where we can say and then it happens and that what happens is good hallelujah so there are two dimensions to this operation and for everyone jesus met who needed healing who needed restoration everything obeyed him except one scenario that i want us to look at now are you ready mark chapter 6 let's look at the scripture now mark chapter 6 we'll begin from verse 1 the bible says and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples follow him next verse the bible says and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands three is this not the carpenter's son now you see you see what what is wrong with these people now after appreciating the power and the wisdom now they are contrasting it is this not the carpenter's son the son of mary the brother of james look at all the descriptions number one the carpenter's son two the son of mary three the brother of james and joseph and judah and simon are this not his sisters here with us and they were what did the bible say they were happy please look up we're studying something here so jesus is teaching and it was an astonishing session and you would think these people would be happy and say glory be to the name of the lord this is the son of god the bible says they they saw the mighty works and they acknowledged that this was superior wisdom but it led immediately to offense how do you get offended at the mighty manifestation of the power of god how do you get offended at the supremacy of the word of god dispensed through a man this was a possibility now next verse jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor that means every true prophet has alongside that office honor are we together he says but in his own country and among his own king and in his own house verse 5 and he could there do no mighty work save that he laid hands on a few sick folk and healed them jesus was surprised the bible says first three words and he marveled jesus was surprised what manner of people are you that i come in full of the spirit without measure haven't taught you the word of god he saw cases and situations there that were within the jurisdiction of his anointing and grace but he was surprised the people could not be touched he was surprised that means that he said some things that did not happen there were people jesus told them rise up and they did not rise up and the disciples said this is surprising master we do not know you with failure what is going on here jesus had to defend that failure and he said look let me give you an explanation that failure did not come from me it came from a condition that i want to correct the condition was the refusal to discern who was in their midst and the bible called it unbelief unbelief wow unbelief yes sir if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you many of you will find out why you have been around mighty men you have been around god and never get anything you can clap you can sing and celebrate what god is doing in the life of others and then return back as though you did not meet god 
these people were in the presence of Jesus the Word of God the son of the living God and the Bible says he marveled at their unbelief now their problem started with number one they are acknowledging the fact that he had the wisdom of God or he was a representation of the wisdom of God they didn't argue that number two they did not argue that there were mighty works that were wrought through him and rather than being happy and giving glory to God the Bible says they were offended what was the basis of their offense we know you your brothers were in that meeting too so by what means did you evolve to rise above them and they began to question his humanity they downplayed his divinity they downplayed the fact that he was the son of god notice that all who received from jesus did not associate him to any um his his earthly work as it were they connected him either to his divinity or to prophecy for instance thou son of david have mercy on me there was something about the covenant of David. It was the covenant of mercy. Are we together? They, when they saw him, they acknowledged him. They called him. In fact, the woman who said Rabboni. They called him all these names. But you see the names that they called him here. The brother of Joseph. Look at his sisters. Look at his other brothers. Look at his relative. Did you know? That of all the people related to Jesus, the only person who benefited from him in fullness was his mother. You read your Bible and see that the relatives of Jesus never truly benefited from his ministry. They hung around and wasted three and a half years and did not get anything. But his mother submitted to his teaching until she received the holy ghost too you would think because she was the one who carried the word that was enough basis for pride but she said no 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 i know what the angel told me and even though i played a major role the only woman on earth who had the privilege of carrying the word do you know what it means to carry the word bodily for nine months you should be proud forever snap your womb sell it patent every kind of thing and here is a woman who can look past that and say you are not my son no, i will not be deceived you are the king of kings my womb only gave you a body i submit to your teachings as usual when jesus was teaching she was not listening as his mother she was listening as a disciple and she qualified right to receive the holy ghost can i tell you this the law of faith demands listen carefully the law of faith demands that both the vessel who would be used by god and the recipient of that grace both of them have faith roles to play and i want to define it for you now if you believe what i am teaching you some of you even without the prayer beginning you would see that certain miracles will begin to happen in your life on the part of the vessel here is what you need to believe number one you need to believe in jesus christ just because you are the vessel that he's using if you do not believe him then you will never truly be able to walk in the miraculous you will not be able to command the power of God you must believe the Bible says that he exists that he is are we together number two you must believe in the fact that by the election of grace he has chosen you to be a dispenser of his power now please listen to me if you believe in jesus as the mighty miracle worker you believe in him as the son of the living god and you do not believe in yourself as the privileged vessel he will use the power of god will not flow there are two levels of believing as far as the vessel is concerned you must believe in jesus but you must believe in yourself not as a human being you must believe in yourself as the vessel privileged by god to be used to bless his people There are many people who do not believe God can use them. There are many people who do not believe that they can be vessels. I have met so many people, even preachers, who truly do not believe that the power of God can flow through them. And Satan will cash in on that mediocrity that sometimes we think is humility. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus himself, the epitome of humility, got to a point where he acknowledged he said before your father abraham was 
I am. It is not pride to acknowledge the fact that the grace of God has found you. Are we together now? And while the devil dangles all the explanations before you, why you think you cannot be used and anointed by God and why you cannot become a conduit of his power, you rest in the fact that his love and his mercy has found you. This is very important, very simple understanding, but it is powerful. Every time I stand to minister before God's people, I believe in Jesus, but I believe in myself, not just as a Nigerian. Believing I'm a Nigerian does not let the power of God flow. I believe that by the election of grace and by the privilege, not the making of myself, that he has so called me by that privilege and allowed me to be a conduit of his power. This I believe. I believe it in the morning. I believe it in the afternoon. I believe it everywhere. I am the son of God. I believe it that I am an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom. I am not just a man of God preaching a sermon. No, I believe I am an envoy. It is not pride. What you believe is what flows to the people. Are we together now? You have to believe this. Whilst you are seated there, you have to believe that you are the one God has raised to be an answer to your family. You are the one that his power will flow through. You know, once you say that all kinds of things will come to discourage you, you have to move them and say, Lord, I believe. I don't know how you will help my own belief, but I believe you can use me. There are times that I'm invited for meetings and when I get there, I just look at the people and I look at their hunger, thousands of people. And even though these people love Jesus, they are happy when I come because they believe that God sent me. But the question is, do I believe he sent me? Don't let your congregation believe you more than you. Do not allow those who need you believe in your being sent more than you, the vessel. Are we together? Look at the confidence of Elisha. He said, let the king come so that he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. He was not just bragging. Who else was there? That I believe that you have to write the things you believe about yourself under God as touching the dispensing of his power. I believe that his power resides within me. I believe that I am a communicator of divine realities. You must believe this. I believe that situations and circumstances over the lives of people will bow when you come representing his purposes in their midst. This is what I believe. When I stepped into this place with your dear pastor, I didn't just come to sit down hoping you will be blessed. That is a risk. I know you will be blessed. Believe me. <laughs> I know you will be healed. I know you will be delivered. I know for some of you, you are, you, are, you are waving those challenges for one last time. I know it. It is the truth. Forgive me if it sounds like pride, but I'll be lying if I tell you I do not believe this. I do not believe that anyone will meet me once and actually go back to say, I don't believe it. Truly speaking, truly speaking, if I actually meet you and your life remains the same, I will go on a retreat. I will have to search. If he's backsliding, let God help me. This is what I believe. Nobody met Jesus twice to be blessed. They only met him more than once for the continuity of their lifting, the continuity of their understanding. It matters. Man of God, listen to me. You so we, we come from backgrounds where we live among people who downplay the investment of the spirit in our lives some of them are well-meaning people i'm teaching you something about the law of faith here the average person in africa the average person looking at me now has more people closer to you who do not believe you than those who believe you is that true 
it is it is a challenge as a continent and even as a nation that it seems like the closer people are to you the more they are aware of your humanity we play together when moses came and stood before his half brother who had now become the pharaoh of egypt you know they were brothers they played while they were small the father had died now Ramesses was pharaoh and he came and met him and said thus said the lord god <laughs> he laughed and said my stupid brother who has been at the backside of the mountain for a long time you come and you meet me with the awareness of the wizardry in egypt and you dare to say i should let god's people go moses said i'm not here to negotiate with you let the rod keep doing the speaking and he said i'm ashamed this is what you brought the god who sent you brought a snake from a rod janus and jambers please come and remind this man that he was once in egypt can i tell you this the first thing you really have to overcome is not demons is to overcome the negative voices that are around you who when god begins to call you and they see you praying the day they invite you in one small fellowship to lead prayer where are you coming from from a little prayer meeting you god does not know what to do with vessels again and he's fine and you feel stupid whereas god is showing you that you are going to the nations this is this is listen to me this is very important these guys in mark chapter 6 look at the sarcasm that they brought before jesus you would think because he was the son of the living god he was immune to sarcasm that was a sarcastic statement who is this guy you guys call him a miracle worker you call him a wonder walking god you call him this and that that is your business we know him these are his relatives imagine that they see people imagine what they would have felt during the triumphant entry who is on a donkey going to where jesus the son of the living god what did he say he was the ancient of days he said he was in heaven don't mind that liar he's an arrogant young man who has younger brothers and yet they came to for the meeting and sat down and listened to him while other people were crying under the influence of his doctrine other people were watching and saying well okay i think i'm impressed but it still doesn't change anything he's still the same person in every congregation in every city in every family you will find people who god is sending you to but they may never be able to receive you will try and pray for them you will fast over their issue and find out that you are always powerless in their midst the moment you are among them you don't feel divine again because there is something about their sense of familiarity they are so aware of your humanity that it is difficult for that power to flow through you this is what happened to jesus and can i tell you after many years of living in such a negative environment it is possible that you can come to the conclusion that could it really be that these people are right hmm. so god has created a strategy and usually not all the time but what god does with people like this is he will take you out of your environment for a very long time and and allow you to have the requisite level of motivation that builds you when he now begins to announce you and it is too late to doubt what you carry he can bring you back now as a savior this is what is happening to some of you because if god keeps you in your family right now number one they may not even allow you serve god to this degree number two they can't understand your passion you may not know how to begin to help that lady please you may not know how to begin to explain it to them this is true many people today who have this clarion call of greatness they have been limited because they are in the midst of people who are used to them we saw you when you were born they say we were there during your naming ceremony but he's calling me to be a prophet what prophet not you maybe a stranger so god allocates strangers to come and bless them while he takes you and builds you in an environment that can respect what he's doing in your life
some of you probably came to Portaco for NYSE and God just trapped you here he said no going back just stay because if you go back you are going to add seven years of pain your environment is not conducive for the kind of anointing I need to put upon your life and you can be roaming around Porter Court with nothing exactly to do and he says look it is about the environment as harsh as Egypt was Moses would never be able to grow effectively if he was in any other place the greatest persecution would not have been Pharaoh's persecution his own people would have killed him How many pastors continue to bleed because when they are with with their congregations that familiarity lift up your hands and they watch them they say please and then they leave their churches and go somewhere where people can appreciate the investment of god's grace and then they are seeing the gifts of the spirit flow and the man himself is surprised i never knew i could walk in the world of knowledge because there was such a a pungent atmosphere this is what they did are you learning something tonight believe what I'm teaching you because it is truth that Jesus the son of the living God the Word of God was surprised that he could not do anything he prayed for a few people they could not receive and yet they wanted to receive the law of faith every vessel that will be used by God has the assignment to conquer the limitation of your territory not listen 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 let me balance it here you don't have to go around fighting those who don't believe you that's not your assignment are we together now God did not give you the assignment of fighting those who didn't believe you many people who do not believe you are not evil people it is just the limitation of their perception so let God know how to introduce you to them in power and glory but as for you you must sustain the psychological strength to rise past the negative perceptions you can step into a place and feel the negative energy if you come as a brother or a sister they will receive you if you come as a classmate they will receive you if you come as a civil servant who worked for five years in a bank they will receive you but don't you dare come in the name of the Lord so believe in Jesus and you must believe in the fact that he has made you a vessel I am grateful to God for helping my mind I don't know what he did to me to have brought me to this place but I will die believing in Jesus and I also die believing that he has made me a vessel that these hands are not just for food they are conduits transmitting divine realities in ever increasing measures that everywhere i stand god is this i believe i believe that i actually shake hands with you and say good morning and you go back and your life remains the same no 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 it's a mentality so when you are given a job you begin to rejoice for that company they don't know why you are happy for them because something has been introduced into that system your real value is not what you studied the real value is what you represent you represent an ark an altar within that workplace that may not allow certain negative things come and they begin to make profits they begin to rise and they check their books and they see that there's nothing we are doing now that we were not doing before except that they employed one person who became an extension of the presence of God can I tell you before Jesus returns I believe that, that there are people who will be part of companies and businesses simply for the spiritual value they bring that people will begin to discern that it's not only intellectual value spiritual value is real value that can be measured that they will invite a man and say you become part of the board members what are you here for absolutely nothing you you secure the presence and the favor of god but thou oh lord are a shield from me my glory you lift my head but thou oh lord are a shield from me 
my glory, the lifter up of mine. Hallelujah. Now, on the part of the recipient, listen carefully. On the part of the recipient, you also have a twofold approach to faith. Like the vessel, you must believe in Jesus. You must believe in Jesus. Number two, you must believe in the fact that this vessel that God is about to use to bless you is truly a vessel anointed by God to bless you. Here's how it's put in the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. It says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. It says, believe in his prophets. He did not give a physical name to that man. That means when you believe in a man, you don't believe in his name, you believe in the office. You can believe in God and believe in your pastor as your brother or your tribesman. You will not prosper that way. You have to believe as touching the office. Are we together now? The moment this faith connection happens, there is no limit to the flow of genuine spiritual power. That when a vessel comes, he comes believing in Jesus and then believing in the privilege to be a vessel, a vessel of honor, a conduit of power. Then on the part of the recipient, you come believing in the same Jesus who the man of God represents and then you believe in him. Now you see, most of these imbalances and this error that we see in the body of Christ, they have come as a carnal way of men of God trying to force members to believe that, look, I'm not ordinary. It's out of the pain of some of these things we are discussing. So ministers have started inventing all kinds of strategies to force the people to believe in them. It doesn't have to be that way. Their motivation may be sincere, but their approach is wrong. The real key is enlightenment on the part of those who receive. Even if Jesus appeared here physically, you will be surprised there are many people who will not receive. And the Bible is already giving us a, a means of correction. You believe in Jesus and you believe in his vessel. The vessel believes in Jesus and he believes in the fact that I have been called, I have been chosen, I have been anointed. When Jesus came, listen to me, he did not just believe in the Father. The Bible says in, in um, Luke 9 chapter 4 or so, the Bible says he looked for where it was written concerning him. Why did he want to know about himself? When he found it, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He read it himself to them. And here's what he said this day what you have read this is the man who embodies that reality as a result mr. man with the withered hand stretch your hands immediately the man was healed Jesus had to come to a point where he acknowledged the woman at the well was having a discussion with him and he got to a point where he had to tell her look this man this living water I am that prophet you are expecting I am he can you stand and tell I'm not saying stand up physically but can you stand before situations and circumstances and say that 120 year old prophecy in my family that a savior will arise by the privilege of God's grace I am he I am he can you stand before your family and say I am he Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When people come to me and say, Apostle, I have a situation and I'm trusting that God will use you I look at them sincerely and because they have believed in Jesus and they have believed in me I take responsibility if he's provided that anointing 
then it becomes wickedness from that point to leave them helpless many of you have come i was we returned from a place with with your dear pastor in the afternoon and i think it was about one or so thereabout i saw several of you standing outside ready to come in and your, your pastor was so touched by that he was communicating it and i looked at it and i said my god some of these people did not go home now let me tell you what sarcastic people will say what is there are this not ordinary men why will you punish yourself like that you can know god for yourself you can have an encounter with god it is the foolishness of our generation that continues to make many people recycle their pain again and again it is not human worship it is desperation Zacchaeus Zacchaeus climbed that tree and he said look I acknowledge I may not be tall but I'm not stupid I will climb the tree and Jesus said come down I'm going to your house tonight we're going to have a moment of prayer but largely what I'm going to be doing tonight is activations and impartations we're going to pray for the sick but I just sense that in this conference there are many things that are dormant spiritually that need to wake up there are gifts of the spirit there are investments of the spirit hear me that are lying low there are giants who are just lying moving like like grasshoppers and my assignment is to create that spiritual ignition hear me man of god you are greater than what you know hear me there is more to you we are like eagles but life has forced us to live like chickens it's time to realize your identity it's time to flap the wings and leave that level and rise to a new and a greater horizon this tonight is my assignment we will pray for the sick we will minister deliverance to the oppressed but can i tell you more than a healing and a miracle i want you to believe that there is a dimension of power your destiny needs and i want you to insist that this conference will not be over until you take your portion of that power hold on how do you know you have accessed that power genesis chapter one two and four that the moment you leave this place you begin to say certain things and you begin to see it happen that you can go to church on sunday man of god and look at your congregation and say i come in the name of the lord i come with the investment of the holy spirit some may laugh as before except that when you speak i tell you i sense a strong angelic presence here please help me who's on the drums someone help me there listen let me tell you something please sit down you see this man standing before you by the privilege of god's grace I want you to understand that every time I stand to minister sometimes it's really good for people to find out how God helped us to journey with him to this level because sometimes in as much as the emphasis should be on Jesus it is important sometimes for people to understand that that spiritual antecedents it helps you to really appreciate from whence the courage the audacity and the power comes from I have spent my life searching seeking pressing learning growing building searching for something divine and true Tired of Christianity without power, explanations here and there, giving all kinds of flimsy excuses. I believe in the gospel of power. I really believe 
in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not just falling down. That an individual can become an effulgence of heaven. You can become an extension of a reality that is greater than this realm. I believe this. I believe that humans, after their encounter with the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Spirit upon their lives, that they change. They no longer become ordinary. I truly believe this. In my life, God has brought me to the realm of encounters. I know what encounters are. Angelic encounters, divine encounters. I have received all kinds of impartations, spiritually and physically. I've shared some of my experiences with you. I withheld some of these experiences. Is there anyone who's sitting on the... Please, help him, man. Eh? Just help me with the symbol. You guys have to be spiritual just help them so that they can discern what to do these things you see all these instruments of worship and these sounds they are not just instruments they are languages the bible says to place him upon the ten stringed instrument it says i will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp hallelujah I have encountered graces I have pursued mantles I have honored my way into anointings I am a product of many of them believe me when I tell you this many of them that you can become an extension of the life and the power of heaven you cannot do ministry otherwise ladies and gentlemen except it is not god you desire to represent the weightiness of that glory that shakina must tabernacle upon you that when you move you carry with you a cloud of glory that is feelable and palpable that anyone who sits under the influence of that meeting they may not even know what is happening to them like some of you now why am i shaking why is my body hot why is it cold what is happening to me it's an exposure it's a realm of reality this is what i'm introducing you to tonight the power of god is a reality you cannot be a blessing without the power of God. You cannot lift men without the power of God. You cannot change lives without the power of God. You cannot save sinners without the power of God. You cannot transform destinies without the power of God. Say unto God, it says, how terrible art thou in your ways. It is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves to you. help them please i believe tonight in this place help this woman please listen to me please hear me every spiritual gift in scripture was given for the edification of the saints every anointing and every mantle and every grace you see here is for the equipping of believers so that we will become matured and we will become powerful for everyone that seeketh, find it. Everyone. If you do not find it, it's because you are not seeking it with the kind of desperation. Listen, there is, there is, a, there is a reckless desperation when you really desire to see the power and the glory of God upon your life. It says, oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land to see your power to see your glory hear me prophets in Port Harcourt, it's time to arise to be prophets indeed apostles in Port Harcourt, it's time to arise to be apostles indeed pastors 
teachers kingdom financiers it's time to arise like Gideon I'm blowing that shofar where are the 32,000 that need to arise even at this time because the king's business requires haste listen to me we're about to pray do you know every time you reject an opportunity to contend for the power of God someone's destiny that you are sent to pay that price for every day you refuse to manifest someone is dying someone is crying someone is losing someone is being defeated hallelujah such glory in this place that lady come I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you help her in the name of Jesus Christ may that grace come on you there is an activation of a grace from within your spirit let that fire burn until you become a vessel of honor and power and glory hallelujah don't wait for a prayer point cry out your heart to your maker tonight lord i'm tired of this level spiritually tired of this level of anointing tired of this level of grace is someone crying everyone that seeketh find it go ahead and pray and cry King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel and the church will see your holy face Emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel when you come again Emmanuel don't be tired it's called an activate conference Emmanuel I enter the holy of holies I enter through the blood of the Lamb I enter to worship you only I enter to honor my For your name is holy You are holy Holy are you Lord So we bow as we enter the throne room And we cast ourselves down at your feet oh. For you are holy, thou art holy There is none like you your presence that is where I speak. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Hello, Madonna. Listen to me, I sense in my spirit that there are people who once walked in certain dimensions but for whatsoever reason it looks like you no longer see that grace working in your life. You used to walk in the prophetic, you used to have dreams before it will happen. What is happening right now is there is a grace for restoration of spiritual gift. I'm stretching my hands now in the name of Jesus is coming like the dew of Hammon. Take that grace now. Take the Akapakotosh Kapebata. Krete Katina Kaparaka Toshia. Keprentes Katina Kapa. That fire is coming upon you. Let there be a restoration. Prophetic dreams that was given direction to destinies. May that grace come back again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Healing mantles that used to walk in your life. And now it looks like for whatever reason. By the mercy of God let it be restored now. Hallelujah. Just where the ministers are here, I just saw something like a ring. And I just saw fire. There are three of you, a strong anointing, just where these ministers are. I don't know you, but I stretch my hands right now. Please bring them out. In the name of Jesus, three of you, that fire from heaven is coming. It's an ignition upon your life. Please bring them out. I want to speak to them and pray. Let's do it very fast. Help them out. That's one of them there. Those outside, make sure you are following. Make sure your heart is open. Is this man a pastor? My friend, are you a pastor? Come. It's a new season for you in Jesus' name. You will step into new dimensions of grace in Jesus' name. Take that fire right now you will never ever be the same help him please in the name of jesus christ you are in ministry watch your association watch your association that's what god is saying i should tell you watch your association in the name of jesus that power is coming upon you take that grace now in the name of jesus a new season that lady wearing yellow i'm seeing oil coming on her head You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a woman here. You are an intercessor. That's what God called you into. Please, where is that woman? I want to pray for you. We have to be very fast. Help her, help her, help her. My God. Just bring her gently. Is that... Who knows her? She, she's into the ministry of intercession. Because there is something that is coming upon you. And the Lord is shifting you to another season. I stretch my hands right now. Help them, please. Look, the wonder-walking power of the Spirit. Mama, you are an intercessor. From from where?
please help help this i'm looking at you um is the mic working i'm looking at this woman mama god bless you where eh? can she hear me okay okay i'm looking at you and i'm seeing the face of baba adeboye on your face i'm from redeem sir you are from redeem you are from redeem yes, sir. can i pray for you ma you can imagine a woman like this you see the kind of people that we that i was telling you you will see a woman like this and you will be surprised at the kind of grace for intercession that she carries in the name of jesus i pray for you may the lord honor you may that grace multiply right now right now take that fire help her in the name of jesus christ supernatural fire in the name of jesus christ there is someone here god has called you purely into evangelism you are an evangelist like a, a proper standard evangelist like reinhard bonke but you have not seen the signs and the wonders when i begin to mention your case the power of god comes on you this is how you see the supernatural is a very very interesting dimension of god please don't just come out at random where people of order let's not make this place rowdy we are doing it very fast why is this woman here you are an intercessor come i'm not saying if you like intercession intercession is a ministry let me pray for you madam look at me in the name of jesus may that grace right now rest upon you take that grace now you will never be the same in the name of Jesus bring this man for me God is going to use this gentleman I don't know him but he will do wonders for the kingdom look at me what do you do you are a pastor where I, I want you to take out time and stay with God don't be distracted because the hand of God is mighty upon your life I stretch my hands the power of the Holy Spirit in a new dimension let it rest upon your life take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ you will never never be the same andrew who is andrew i'm hearing a name andrew andrew your name is andrew is there someone like that we have to be very very fast andrew andrew do we have someone with such a name andrew when you find that person please very quickly let me talk to the person and then we'll pray now hear me over the last three months the lord has been speaking to me about the restoration of the healing mantle do you know most people especially in our generation we except for a few people we've not really seen what the bible calls the ministry or the gift of healing people heal here and there but you ask all the elderly people they will tell you that during their days they really saw people who walked in the healing anointing today you may see pockets of healings here and there but there is a restoration of that grace and everywhere i've traveled as god has granted me grace i have prayed by the privilege of the apostolic that god will find people in that place i don't pray carelessly i pray with understanding i want you right now the people i'm going to pray for please bring them out because there is going to be a mighty there are a few people god wants to consecrate and separate to the healing ministry not just healing desire some of you don't look like it but you'll be surprised father i don't know where they are from my left to my right inside and outside everyone oh god that you have preordained especially at a time like this in the name of jesus may that grace let it look for you now let it find you help this woman take that grace right now take that grace right now mantles of healing in the name of jesus mantles of healing bring them out take that grace right now 
many women will step into this end time ministry hear what i'm telling you many women will step into this ministry of prophetic healing healing by the power of god right now i declare may that grace come upon you right now show us the ancient path help them would you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to god is still releasing healing 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 there's one person is this the worship team i just saw light coming this direction there is one of you that that grace that grace for many years god has been looking for you that anointing is coming on one of you right now in the name of jesus christ hear me for some of you god is speaking to you the season has come stop fighting this call upon your life you have fought it for years god will leave you and come again he will leave you and come again now is the time to say yes may that grace come upon you not now every fear every fear that is causing you to not release your all i crush it right now by the power of the holy ghost if your pastor did not answer the call many of the people who stand blessed today would not be blessed it is a noble call indeed is it augustina augustina or augustine augustina i think that should be a woman is there someone with that name augustina i want to pray for you my god the Lord is shifting people. Augustina, please, when you find such person, Paranika Tisha Lakusia Dabada. The ministry of signs and wonders. The ministry of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders are beyond miracles. The ministry of signs and wonders. Madam, this woman looking at me. What do you do? Huh? Are you in ministry? Your own ministry? Because can I talk to you? Come. Your life is about to change. You are in ministry in this city. No. I want yes, to pray sir. for you. Madam, look at me. You believe in Jesus? No. Yes, sir. I want you to dedicate yourself after this conference for a period of prayer and fasting because there is something God is doing in your life. There is a dimension of grace that God is bringing you into. But right now I declare, you will start having very strange prophetic and angelic encounters. I declare, take that grace now. Take that fire by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hear me i don't mean to insult you but listen to me it is not everything i see that i will say there are some of you after this conference you need to go back and prune certain relationships and work on certain things in your life now you see the truth about it is i'm not a herbalist i'm a man of god but you see the wisdom of ministry is not everything that you see you don't come and embarrass people but I am telling you, as this fire is coming on people, for, for, for several people, the fire will call you to a deeper level of work with God. There are certain relationships and certain practices that you must edit out of your ministry. That is the honest truth. So that some of this, this prayer does not just become an endorsement for the continuation of error. Or an endorsement for the continuation of certain limitations while we do not condemn there is a call for reordering and if God beckons on you with that call don't be ashamed there is nothing to be ashamed about it is seeing the things of God more perfectly for some of us the limitation is the issues of money you love Jesus with all your heart but your approach to money as far as ministry is concerned need some divine editing don't be embarrassed there is nothing to be embarrassed about 
the goal is to mature and perfect the church we have to be careful so that while the anointing of the spirit comes upon us we do not misinterpret it to mean an endorsement to certain extra biblical practices you don't have to be in error you must insist that that the purity of your delivery as far as ministry is concerned is within the boundary of scripture are we together now so we are praying madam may god honor you in the name of jesus christ this man you are in ministry i wonder why god is visiting people very strongly in ministry in the name of jesus christ may the lord show you mercy help her in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit receive the mercy of god in jesus name now hear me it's time to pray against the forces that sit on the destinies of men do not forbear with evil every time you forbear with evil it multiplies every time you forbear with evil it multiplies i want to pray for you right now for those in front here i declare and declare supernatural impartations that this anointing that has come upon you you will put it to good use for the glory of the name of jesus and everything that represents the attribute of the flesh let it be cut away right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord if they can once they are fine they can return to their seat so that they clear the space for others now hear me the bible says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the sons of jacob will possess their possessions we believe and we teach the whole counsel of god including his desire to see his people free from every demonical influence that will not allow them serve god acceptably and it is based on this that i want to pray please listen to me there are all kinds of oppressions and oppressions are at, at different levels when the devil oppresses you it does not negate the fact that you are a christian this is why he gave gifts paul was buffeted again and again are we together now david was a man who had an evil spirit come i mean saul an evil spirit come to torment him now i want to pray because there are people whose lives and destinies have been trapped to rise up they cannot rise up to go forward they cannot go forward there are families that have been marking time you know you are oppressed when the only thing growing in your life is your age if the only thing growing is your age nothing else growing it's an oppression i want to pray for you now hallelujah god is giving me a very interesting instruction please hold on guys hallelujah you see when you are ministering one of the things that we must learn is that you must discern the voice of god even while we minister his lord over what we are doing hallelujah in a very strange way the lord is asking me that we should just be silent and there are people who are oppressed i'll ask them to resume but right now while we are standing here the lord i'm going to speak genesis 1 2 to 4 and the moment i begin to pray if for any reason there is someone under the sound of my voice who either personally or whose family has been under the influence of strange and wicked spirits the moment i begin to pray that fire from heaven will bring not only visitation but a separation now i want to pray listen to me here is the instruction god is giving me there are two people who are going to shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everybody now i can pray i want you to bring them out father i decree and declare everyone who is under the influence of any spirit other than the christ right now i decree and declare from the front to the back from the left to the right makata skatete bakata this is your season of liberty help them just help them so they don't injure themselves whether you are an usher or not just help them and guide them forward i really apologize pastor having to bring people quickly please bring them forward right now i declare 
at the count of three the lord is going to begin to minister deliverance and those yokes will start breaking please help them whether you're an usher or not one two three i decree and declare be free now be free now be free now the power of god is setting you free please bring them out my goodness help them yokes of darkness yokes of delay all kinds of ordinances of darkness tying down destinies in the name of jesus be free 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 bring them out enough is enough by the power of the holy ghost i'm seeing people's feet tied so that they don't move forward but fire is coming right now everything that has tied your advancement i decree and declare let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now go forward in the name of jesus go forward in the name of jesus go forward in the name of jesus there are some of you even though you are in november before the end of this year everything god said he would give you from january till november within one month i'm speaking it prophetically it comes into your life there are ministries here you have experienced stagnation in different levels you are sincere you love the lord but it looks like an attack just came over your ministry an attempt to frustrate the work right now i stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic every embargo sitting on any work here that should glorify jesus i declare that embargo lifted now I'm seeing the number 25 and I'm seeing veils covering the eyes of the faces of those people. You see, when the favor of God is upon you, in the realm of the spirit, it shines your face as said from scripture. Everything that covers your face is hindering favor from your life and based on the integrity of scripture. I don't know where they are, but if there is anybody here. You once walked in a realm of favor, but now everybody forgets you. Every good person who can be there to be used by God to help you. You are connected to people who can be used by God. And yet you don't find them at times of help. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, may that veil be torn into pieces. Hear me. One of the graces that is upon this house, house on the rock especially, is the grace for influence. And there are many of you who are connected to this house and yet that grace has not spoken over your life. I want to lend my voice with your pastor to release that grace afresh. You should not be doing something and you are hidden. It is called a house on a rock. Not a house inside a hole. No everything that has failed to find visibility in your life please believe it whether it is your ministry your work with god your business i decree and declare that by reason of this conference and in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i declare right now find visibility <laughs> hallelujah let me pray for the sick Please lay your hands right now. All those who are in front, I declare that every spirit that has oppressed you and would not let you go, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I speak as one sent. In the name of Jesus, let them go now. At the count of three, release their destinies never to return. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out of their destinies. Out of their lives. 
in the name of Jesus Christ release their destinies right now by the power of the Holy Ghost release them now release them now Please lay your hands. I want to pray for the sick. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, I Madam, this woman, Lay your hands on your stomach. I'm seeing the power of God touch you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands right now. Let the life of Jesus be ministered to your body right now. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, be healed completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. I have been a victim of oppression in the area of sickness. I know what it means to receive a miracle you see let me tell you why the healing ministry is very important according to the law of territory if you do not sustain a healthy body you are not authorized to function in this realm are we together now so you need there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to coexist with your body if your body is deteriorated beyond a certain threshold the spirit will have to leave are we together now so every manifestation of sickness is an administration of death in process this is why the healing ministry is powerful it's not just about showing that a man of God is powerful no he sent them two by two and he gave them a commission he said as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cast out devils raise the dead freely you have received he says freely give lay your hands now believe jesus all those tumors all those growths don't forget about it you just focus on jesus i want to pray you are the house that is on a city the rock that cannot be hidden let me pray for this man Andrew, what do you do, sir? Public servant. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead. That everything that represents... What's the issue? Why is he crying? Please find out. Just someone politely find out from him. Your father has cancer. Just, just take it's okay it's okay just take it easy just take it easy you don't have to cry you're welcome that's why you came here we're going to pray he's crying because his father is a pastor and he has cancer very touching isn't it let me define compassion for you one of the principles of the flow of the anointing god will grant us another time to be able to teach on it is that you must sustain compassion compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity you have to be touched that is why many times in your training process you will often taste the things you would set people free from so that it emotionally connects you to that anointing that every time you see people in that pain you remember you, you can draw from the archives pain is a gift not all pains are demonic you cannot serve god acceptably until there is historically it may not necessarily be god causing it but he's a master at using everything around your life to become a tool to build you do not throw away your pain your pain is a gift that will become a gateway for the anointing to flow in your life there is a level of innocence that does not allow the anointing flow when you have gone through pain you will know what it means to administer to those in pain If everyone's face were covered in heaven, you will still know who Jesus is because he's the only one that carries the nails. You would think because he's seated at the right hand, everything should heal. It remains there as a testament that he is Savior, the one who died for our sins. 
not even in heaven at the hands everyone who has genuinely had an encounter with Jesus they will tell you you will know he's Jesus not just because the name is written on him but you will see that sacrifice remains a memorial forever I want to pray Andrew God bless you what do you do sir what can I say because I turned to a company about to be the refinery a fine a refinery do you believe if I pray for you God can lift you you believe that there is a prophetic dimension to anything it does not it does not create it is not a license for laziness now this is the balance because many people in the body of Christ sometimes may not be diligent they are just waiting for the prophetic to do everything the prophetic comes and at, as an advantage it is activated at the instance of diligence are we together now diligence is the platform that makes the prophetic efficient so I want to pray for you please hold my hand stand up father you have anointed us to bless I release this grace upon this gentleman walk wonders through him right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ please come sir in the name of Jesus I pray for you may the Lord help you and show you mercy in Jesus name I pray now please lay your hands let me pray for the sick like this my dear brother who is crying over his father you can stand in for him my friend don't worry don't feel stupid for crying I know that it's coming from a sincere heart many of you have lost loved ones and you know the pain let me tell you this sometimes when you see people like this I thank God for this ministry because it's a ministry that is excellent and yet flexible enough to be able to attend to needs like this like him believe God for a miracle shall we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name our father hear us from heaven Give our sins, we pray. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, here at House on the Rock, Port Harcourt, Activate Conference 2021, I decree and declare right now that the healing power of Jesus, now please listen, here's what I want you to do. I want to pray for you. We'll do this in about a minute or two. And some of you, even whilst you came forward, miracles were already happening. I sense a very strong anointing. You don't have to bring anyone under the anointing, just help them. When I pray for you, I want you to believe and shout a resounding amen. And then immediately, I want you to check yourself. I want us to shame the devil in this house. Check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you whether you are inside or outside even following online here's what I want you to do very quickly I want you to make your way when I ask you to to come to either of the aisles here or here and even if it's just two or three testimonies we take to confirm the things that God is doing in the midst of his people is that all right now believe Jesus for a miracle and all of you who are watching from your homes you're watching anywhere and everywhere I want you to release your faith from every nation from Europe to US Africa here in Nigeria believe Jesus for a miracle right now in the name of Jesus Christ I rebuke the spirit that is back of every infirmity here represented and in the name that is above all names I decree and declare right now from the crown of your head my God 
such an anointing is flowing to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now I administer the power of God to your body I command every growth dissolve now every swelling go down now every tumor disappear now migraine headaches be healed in Jesus name ulcers of all sorts be healed in Jesus name every blood condition I decree and declare be healed in Jesus name HIV be healed in Jesus name cancer be healed in Jesus name any and all bone conditions be healed in Jesus name if you are here on crutches you are here on a wheelchair I declare be healed in Jesus name every blind eye whether partially or completely blind be opened in the name of Jesus every deaf ear be opened in the name of Jesus pain lower abdominal pain the power of God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus there's something called tonsillitis there's someone you've been suffering this it comes and goes it comes and goes very inconveniencing right now as I'm praying for you the power of God is touching you in the name of Jesus Christ pile painful pile I decree and declare be healed now there's someone you have this inconveniencing pain under your foot just under very painful when you stand sometimes you have to break and check yourself I decree and declare be healed right now in Jesus name it started for you like muzzle pull what we call what we know to be muzzle pull you know that that strain on on your 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 your, your lap area here but now is it seems it's degenerated to something very very painful and serious affecting your walk but in the name of Jesus I declare right now be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God here at activate conference 2021 I bring you the life and the healing power of Jesus and for those of you who are standing in for your loved ones like this my brother here I decree and declare wherever they are across this nation and around the globe may the angel of God's presence go with the healing power of Jesus to them in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name be cleansed in Jesus name now hear me very quickly in the next one or two minutes we're out of time I want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened to you I want you very quickly we'll just take the first few people who can make it for some of you even whilst you fell under the anointing a miracle happened to you people are coming are you celebrating them as they come check yourself whether you are inside or outside the moment you find out that a miracle has happened please make your way to the front right now very quickly let every other name fade away keep coming let every other name until there's only you let every other name jesus take your place come on celebrate miracles let every other thing fade away Let every other name fade away Until there's only you Jesus take your place Are you ready? Let's have a
a few of the testimonies. Yes, please, very quickly. No, 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 hold on. Just stand. If someone can reach them with a mic there, okay. Just let's just have one mic so that a pastor or anybody can stand with them. So very quickly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Heal of three weeks repain. Repain. Yeah. For how long, sir? For three weeks. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Any pain? Completely gone. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Very quickly. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Straight to the point. Apostle, um, before now I've been Don't give them the mic. Just hold it for them. Okay. Before now I've been listening to a lot of your messages online. I, what I, happened to you right now? Right now, okay. The healing um, ministry is expected. Okay, that, that's okay, a call the, on me. I see. The In the name ministry. of Jesus Christ, I pray. Right now, because you believe, I stretch my hands and I seal that call. By the power of the Holy Spirit, carry that anointing and work wonders to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Yes, please, very quickly. Next person. Hallelujah. Amen. So I've been having pains at my right hand side since I was in primary school. I wow. was having these pains. And there was a time my husband took me to the doctor for operation. They said they don't see anything. So yes, as the I pain was is there. Praying, yes. Okay. So as we were praying, yes. I just lay on there. I called my daughter because my daughter that invited me here. Yes. That she come. So as I put my hand there, I just tell my daughter, I don't see pains again. No. Completely gone. Look at this. Walk and see if there is any pain. Check yourself. Any pain. Are you celebrating miracles? This is a mother right from primary school. In the name of Jesus, he will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Very quickly. Fupai. Come again. Fupai. Fain, painful, painful pile. Painful pile. For how long, my dear? 2019. From 2019. And right now, you don't feel pain again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare it will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Apostle, I do usually have a pain here, a growth right here in my, close to my private. And why do a growth? Yes, yes. Are, you, are you seeing what God is doing? You see? And it just yes. Gets, and it, I always have. A deep pain. It usually comes. And right now, it's gone. It's gone. In Jesus' name, it never returns to you again. Yes, please. Go ahead. I have this pain that I've been here for years. It comes. I've gone to a hospital. The doctor, they couldn't diagnose what it is. And right I've now, I've exercised my faith, but I was in the service. The pain came. But as we are ministering, I can't feel it again. It's Completely. Not. Check yourself. Completely gone. It will never return to you again in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having hot and, and cold sensation for three years now. And you mentioned my case. You did not only mention that, you also mentioned muzzle pull and pain under the feet. Instantly, as you mentioned it, everything is happening. Completely. Check yourself. Any pain. Completely. It's gone. Yes, sir. Celebrate with her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Maybe Let's have just two or three more people and then I'll just do a general prayer and speak over you. Yes, okay, please. I have this pain in my eye because I do read at night and it's so bad that I can't even look at um, the screen. My eyes will be paining me. But now I can look at the screen. You can look at the screen. Yes. Look at the screen. Any pain? No pain. No God. Come on, Portacot. Is this how you celebrate miracles? Yes, please. I've been having a toothache for the past three weeks and it's very painful at this side of my jaw. And right now, completely gone. Yeah. It will never return again. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. I usually have pains on my joints. And since yesterday, I've been feeling pains on my joints and on my shoulders. So when we are in ministry, I pray to God that I will not go home and take pain relief or injections. And I will be fine. And now I feel free. Completely. Yeah. May that freedom remain forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. I had a serious... Um, Difficult in swallowing. It's been on for months and pain in my leg. I couldn't walk comfortably. Completely. Gone. It's gone. In Jesus' name, it will never return to you. Yes, please. Hallelujah. This morning I woke up and gradually a pain started building in all my joints. But while you started praying, Apostle, I could no longer feel it. It was like when it was like the cord was on my head and it was washing wow. down all, all It out. will never return to you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, please. Apostle, I've been having pains like almost a week now in my chest. I've just been enduring it. Even before I came to service this night, I even thought of not coming. But while you were praying, 
I could not feel any pain anymore. The pain in the name, my chest, I can't feel any pain again. In the name of Jesus Christ, to the glory of the name of the Lord, He will never return to you again. Amen. Yes, please go ahead. For two years now, I've been having chest pain, severe chest pain. Mm. But as we were praying, something started moving on my chest. Completely. If I could know it. In the name of God Jesus, God. yes, please. God bless you. Yes, go ahead. Mr. Lord, I um, a nail pierced through my leg last two weeks, and since then I noticed that my leg was swollen. Though I didn't take any medication, but right in the service, everything disappeared. I'm set free. You can walk. Look at me, my dear. In the name of Jesus, any pain, any pain there, I declare it will never return to you again. Yes. Because I was when you spoke about I had a muscle pull a certain time last year. I had a muscle pull and. My left thigh, I started feeling the pain at my joint here, the left thigh. He graduated and, and, and centered the second, my right thigh, and no. started feeling the pain. But now, as we were praying, the pain was... In the name of Jesus, it will never return. Yes, please. So I've had this um, pain at my lower back that gives me so much strain while standing, sitting, or walking. But while the prayer went on, I can't feel any pain anymore. Completely. I'm gone. Okay. Yes, please. God bless you. Good evening, Apostle. I yes. usually have uh, this ringy sensation in my right ear. With Your right ears? Yes, okay. it's itching. When you ask us to put our hands there, I laid my hands and I can't feel it again. Hallelujah. Now, praise God. Um, for, for sake of time, sadly, we may not be able to take all of the testimonies, but I'd like you to be upstanding while I just pray for these people and then I'll speak over your life. What happened to you? Come. Since you made that bold declaration. No, don't give her the mic. Let me hear. What's your name and your testimony? Go my ahead. name is Onye. For like two years, I've been having lower abdominal pain. It's gone. Yes. Um, my neck for like one and a half year, I've been having this pain. It's gone. Then I used to heal. I used to pray for people when I was much younger. And they get healed. Not some, not instantly. Some instantly. But I didn't take it seriously. But today I think it's back. Don't think. I know it's You bad. came for a conference in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will return to you in full measure. And I pray that you will use it to serve the purposes of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. To share with us three things caught my attention when I came in. Number one, that this is truly a very happy and a grateful church. I was, yes. I was truthfully delighted when I saw people just rejoicing and giving God praise. And um, like the man of God declared, thanksgiving will never depart from you in Jesus' name. Number two, when I came here, um, I was almost in tears because of old and wonderful memories. Wonderful memories of songs, of faces, of people and it just caught my attention to see the marvelous things and how far god had brought us you know i remember in the home church then equa during days of thanksgiving people dancing and rejoicing so sitting here to relieve that whole thing again i was i was struck again may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ and the third is that that hunger and that expectation knowing that you're not only rejoicing, but that your hearts are opened even for the word. The Lord will do us good in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Psalm 107. I'll be here very briefly just to charge our hearts along the theme. Psalm 107 from verse 8 and 9. Please turn your Bible if you have one. You should have one. Psalm 107. Verse 8. and nine here's what it says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men verse 9 says for he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry with goodness hallelujah one of the secrets of a life of continued advancement a life of continued progress as revealed from scripture is this this mystery 
that is called thanksgiving hallelujah the bible is full of men and women who were vocal about expressing their recognition of the mercy the hand and the grace of god upon their lives and the resultant effect of that discernment and that recognition the bible is also full of people who took god for granted and took his mercies for granted until they saw the other side of his mercy and they were left in shame they were left downcast and so the bible says the things that are written aforetime it says they are for our learning so that we through the patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope that means that when we study these things they are a lesson for us so that we learn from history and then we'll be able to take advantage of the steps that were taken in time past and the results that followed hallelujah praise the name of the lord generally speaking gratitude and thanksgiving is predicated on three three things basically number one a recognition of help that is beyond the capacity of the recipient the foundation for thanksgiving is a recognition that you have obtained help from a source that is higher than you are we together now you do not need to give thanks if you are the one who is the doer nobody thanks himself you have to thank another influence that is other than you who was able to provide help that you could not provide so that is the first um, foundation for thanksgiving the recognition that this result this advancement this progress in my life even though it has happened it is the coordinated effort of many people and many systems outside of my influence in many regards if you do not realize that you are limited by yourself and that the results that you produce are not necessarily a true reflection of your ability they are a reflection of the mercy of god added to your ability so that recognition that i was assisted by a source higher and greater than me puts you in a position where you give thanks number two thanksgiving is also built on the understanding listen carefully thanksgiving is built on the understanding that the privilege that you enjoy is not a privilege that everybody has for instance the privilege of life for instance the privilege of health when you understand and you recognize that some of these gifts and blessings that we trivialize like life like health like wisdom like advancement like a good family not everybody has had the privilege to enjoy that blessing it sponsors thanksgiving hallelujah by reason of what i do i have the opportunity to pray for people all the time and especially for people who are sick and downcast and sometimes i'm broken myself to see the kinds of situations that people go through are we together one time i remember praying for someone who had i think he had a fracture very major fracture and you know um they attended to the legs but he told me that he had to hang that leg for three months 90 days except adjusted by the doctors so he would hang there and i said how do you sit in one place for 90 days now when you recognize that to walk is a blessing and a gift are we together the the gift of health the gift of longevity then it sponsors thanksgiving number three generally speaking thanksgiving is the key for more of anything the moment you celebrate god or you celebrate men and thank them sincerely for what they have done thanksgiving sustains the unique character of making um, the person who who gave the benevolence to do more are we together every time you celebrate people every time you acknowledge god for what he has done that thanksgiving sustains the ability to sponsor more of that result in your life that means if you find out that you you are experiencing certain levels of ups and then downs ups and then downs the answer could be that you are not apt to be grateful 
you find out that people enjoy certain levels of the lifting and the mercy of god and then for a very long time they don't seem to see the hand of god again it is because many times we are not careful and we are not intentional to acknowledge god are we blessed so far the second thing i want to say is that gratitude please listen gratitude must be communicated in a way that the recipient of that acknowledgement must perceive that you are really grateful otherwise it is not gratitude let me give you an instance if i give you 10 naira and you say thanks and i give you 1000 and you say thanks and i give you 1 million and you say thanks and i give you 10 million and you say thanks you see there is a problem there because the sacrifice that comes into giving 10 million is not the same sacrifice that comes to giving 10 naira so i expect the communication of your gratitude to match the sacrifice that went into communicating that benevolence are we together now so if god blesses you and honors you and all you say is in one minute lord thank you and you think it's done for life same thing for health same thing for wisdom same thing you are not giving thanks the goal of thanksgiving is to make the person who has helped you to recognize how grateful you are and until they receive that perception you do not stop have you seen people thank you in a way that they just come and maybe lie down or prostrate and sometimes you are embarrassed in as much as you know that what you have done is great and worthy of commendation you didn't expect they would go so far and then by the next day they say thank you again and then after two weeks they say thank you most likely you will do good to them again is that true but someone who you help in such a lavish way and he just carelessly maybe after two or three days oh i forgot thanks chances are that you may not be apt to help them again this is how it is with god there are people who have mastered the art of thanksgiving it is difficult for them to be barren in any area for the slightest show of the hand of god they will worship and thank god in a way you would think god gave them a jet and gave them a house and you ask them why exactly are you happy and he says my children went to school and came back safely and to us we may think that is what what in the world should that warrant this level of lavish thanksgiving this was the secret of david one of the secrets that made him a man after god's heart remember when the ark was being restored to jerusalem the bible says david danced and rejoiced and celebrated to a point where his wife said look you are being too undignified you are you are compromising on the ethics of royalty and he said i'm rejoicing before the lord who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me the bible records that she died barren are we together thanksgiving generally grateful people are never stranded because they will always easily find help the bible says oh that man so provided you are a man you are mandated to praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works even to the children of men in first thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 18 particularly first thessalonians chapter 5 apostle paul again is admonishing the church in thessalonica and he said to give thanks in all things he says for this is the will of god the condition is not necessarily the will of god the art of consistent thanksgiving he says in everything give thanks how many things everything now let me tell you this it is very difficult to give thanks in everything because there are some things that are not favorable there are some things that do not warrant giving thanks i understand you giving thanks at the instance of something good a positive testimony a job promotion increase children health etc but the bible says in everything he never said in everything that is good he said in everything to give thanks that means it takes faith to be thankful because sometimes it does not make sense to be thankful are we blessed this morning and so i have two groups of people that i want to speak to as regards thanksgiving and gratitude group number one those who have found a reason to rejoice 
based on the wonderful things that have been done in their lives this is the first group i want to address this morning in truth there are people from january even till november you have seen the hand of god such display of benevolence and kindness and mercy and it is important that we give thanks in Psalm 1, the Lord in their trouble, and the Bible records that he delivered them out of their distress. The Bible says he led them forth by the right way that they might go into a city of habitation. It says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness. The Bible says, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being back. hallelujah thank you let's celebrate the technical team thank them very much we continue our reading verse 11 because they rebelled against the words of god and contempt the counsel of the most high the bible says therefore he brought down their heart with labor they fell down and there was none to help 12 the bible says verse 13 now then they cried unto the lord notice that every time they cried he responded they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress the bible says he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder the bible says verse 15 oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men for he hath broken the gates of brass and caught the bars of iron in sunder fools the bible says because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted it says their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near to the gates of death then they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction 21 says all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving so there is something called the sacrifice not just the declaration of thanksgiving there is the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his word his works with rejoicing it says they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters they see the works of the lord and his wonders in the deep 25 for he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves thereof they mount up to the heavens they go down again to the depths their soul is melted because of trouble 27 says they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit end and then again they cry unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses four more verses and we're done he maketh the storm to come now begin to read with understanding so that the waves are still he says then they are glad because they be quiet so he bringeth them to their desired heaven verse 31 says oh that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men let them exalt him in the congregation of the people there is a level of thanksgiving that goes beyond your home and your family it should be done in the congregation like we are celebrating today and then the bible says and praise him in the assembly of the elders praise the name of the lord i don't know about you but sometimes i feel guilty even asking god for anything in my life because i look at my life and my life is full of the testimony of the faithfulness and the goodness of god sometimes i almost feel evil to ever want to ask him for anything because there are many things in my life i did not ask for that he has brought does someone have that kind of testimony the mercy of god from january to february some of us even in the midst of the pandemic from last year to this year as bad as it looks it's been your most successful year always 
it is the mercy and the faithfulness of god we must be discerning to know and to see the things that god has done in our life and we must be 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 very apt to give thanks the hymn writer says count your blessings and then it goes further to say name them one by one and it ends by saying and it will surprise you what the lord has done if you are to name your blessings for health for longevity i think one of the most boisterous flights i've had in my entire life flying was this year was returning from a trip and it was a short trip and then it was raining and i don't know what happened i have never been in a plane that was shaking like you were bouncing a basketball i mean i said well lord for me to leave Saborai Kabani Nina Gode Cheto Kabani Nagode. Do you know? Hold on. Salvation. You said Cheto. Do you know salvation is a blessing? No matter what you have in this life, it will only last year someday whether we like it or not jesus christ is returning and according to the authority of scripture there are people who will not go it's sad and painful but there are people who will not make it for rejecting jesus so the fact that you were able to be a recipient of the gospel that god opened your eyes to see this act of benevolence of jesus he said i lay me down to sleep and i wait for the lord sustain me did the bible not say except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build except the lord watches over a city it says the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night do you not see that happen to nigerians people wake up very early in the morning helter skelter and return late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but the bible says he giveth his beloved sleep If God has done anything in your life that is worth thanking him for obvious results you have five six children and all of them are born again and well behaved it is a real miracle especially in our world today count it as a miracle and a half are we together now God granted you grace you're rising in your job sustaining you blessing you that you have bread on your table it is something to be thankful for and then there are a number of us that have had notable testimonies this year is that true magnificent displays of the kindness and the grace of god someone please shout after me say thank you jesus thank you. say it with understanding say thank you jesus. thank you jesus so this is the first group i'm speaking to those who have seen the faithfulness of god in a manifest dimension I am part of that group truly God has been good very very good to me you have done me well you have done me well you have done me well Jesus you have You have done me well. The faithfulness of God. There are people who became joyful mothers of children this year. There are people who were saved from the sword and the edge of death. People escaped terrorists this year. People escaped herdsmen this year. The road that you passed, you saw dead bodies and yet you passed the faithfulness of God. One more time, say thank you, Jesus. Very quickly, the second category of people that I'll be speaking to are men and women here seated and following 
who seem to not have a reason to be thankful in truth there are people who have been challenged for others it's been arguably the worst year for them from a human standpoint and i have a message for you also habakkuk chapter 3 we'll begin our reading from verse 7 habakkuk chapter 3 please turn your bible if you will to habakkuk chapter 3 habakkuk chapter 3 are you there verse 17 habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 17 here's what it says although the fig tree shall not blossom hmm, neither shall fruit be in the praise the name of the lord let's try it again it says although the fig tree shall not blossom neither shall fruit be in the vines and sometimes painfully the labor of the olive shall fail it says and the fields shall yield no meat the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls this right here may be someone's testimony that i did everything this year but it seems nothing worked i thought i would be happy but it seems all that i had from january till november is sorrow sadly many people lost loved ones this year is that true others lost opportunities others right now are managing uh, a deteriorating health condition and i tell you the truth in the midst of pain it is difficult to see the faithfulness of god are we together the next verse there says yet yet means in spite of yet i will rejoice in the lord not necessarily in my situation but i will rejoice in the lord it says i will joy in the god of my salvation 19 says the lord god is my strength and he will make my feet like hind's feet he will make me to walk upon mine high places but i will rejoice very powerful scripture I've had the opportunity to pray with families trusting God for miracles and sometimes it's very painful as a man of God when you pray and agree with families over an issue and then it does not turn out as desired I've prayed for a few people trusting God for life trusting God for restoration of health and sometimes they call me and they say apostles sadly the person passed away I was in South Africa a few weeks ago to preach for a dear friend wonderful family we built a very strong relationship and it was in a very uncomfortable time but I did it to honor the Lord and to honor our relationship and the wife had battled cancer for a while and it's been managed you know very strong woman of faith and um, while I was there we had the opportunity to just share together in fellowship and break bread and I didn't know that would be our last supper hallelujah as I returned back to the country exactly one week he left for Zambia for a ministration and she called him and said I'm not sure you will meet me I may not make it and he pleaded with her he said please just hold on and allow me come back let me see your face one last time as my wife and the mother of my children before you pass sadly by the time he arrived she had gone into coma and from then she passed on and so calling this man you can imagine I, I I felt that pain in my heart and I said sir do you still believe the Lord and he said absolutely minister to you in a very deep way Job chapter 1 and then verse 20 we're wrapping up very very powerful scripture I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true I lift my voice to honor you because your word is true I will sing the book of Job is a very interesting book because it starts by telling us a man who was the wealthiest in the East and then the Bible says he was a man that feared God and eschewed evil 
then the bible says on a certain day something tragic happened in one day a man would have people come back to back bringing reports just to let you know that all your children sons and daughters alike have fallen by the sword just to let you know that your cattle your animals your investments everything fallen by the sword just to let you know that everything has happened verse 20 let this be a lesson for someone tonight who may be offended in the lord and you're saying lord but i've served you and i've given my best i have given into the missions i have served you here's what the bible says when job heard all of this news the bible says job arose and rent his garment and shaved his bed job fell upon the ground let's finish that scripture together and worship how do you worship in the midst of such a news all your children dead your investments gone the bible says job worshiped and the next verse says please give it to us verse 21 now naked came out i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord hath taken away he says blessed be the name of the lord next verse which is very instructive it says and in all these in all the tragedies in all the negative news the bible says job sin not nor charge god foolishly there might be someone who came to church today you had to literally drag yourself i'm just doing this so people don't ask me why didn't you come to church today i bring you a word of hope there is hope for the living are we together and there are times that you can rejoice in the god of your salvation the one who is able to save in every man's life sadly there are times that are called the days of adversity moments that are not desired by anyone moments that bring pain moments that bring tragedy moments of seeming sadness moments of disappointment but the bible tells us that at such times you must be able to draw strength and still say thank you jesus for so for this group of people can we join them as again you say thank you jesus and the devil will say for what and let me answer you you are the reason why it was not worse than it was thank you jesus for the fact that even though i seem to have had a deteriorating health condition that i am alive to even see this day thank you jesus when you live a thankful and a grateful life when you live a life of joy a life of peace then you will not only secure your blessings you will be able to triumph over seasons of pain you see life works like seasons in nigeria as we know uh we have rainy season and dry season right about now in many regions especially from the middle belt down the north is what we know to be dry season the absence of rain it can be dusty it can be cold it can be very very inconveniencing but every time please listen to me every time you see a dry season in your life a dry season always comes with a letter from the rainy season i am returning and every time you see a rainy season a rainy season always comes with a letter from a dry season that i may be here when you master the fact that seasons change it is only god that does not change and so you make up your mind that regardless the seasons i will remain thankful it is our intention that our lives continue to be an effulgence of positive testimonies but sadly in many regards either in your life or in that of those around you you may find occasions like someone may be having now where you may not have any logical reason to rejoice even so it is profitable to be thankful hallelujah is it all right if whilst you are seated you bow your head in prayer and find one at least one genuine reason to say thank you go ahead thank him let me give you a few reasons to thank him thank him for life thank him for health thank him for grace go ahead and say thank you thank you Jesus thank you and for everyone here 
who does not seem to have a reason you may be in tears for some of you but can you say thank you jesus i lost a loved one but thank god that i'm alive today to be an extension of their legacy thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you father i may seem to have lost my job or not gotten a job but i thank you i was thinking by now i would have children but i'm still a mother in waiting thank him thank him from the depth of your heart my children may not seem to have turned out the way i expected but thank you because i know you are working somebody say thank you thank you for january february march thank you for april may and june thank you for july august september october november thank you for the privilege of life now we're praying one more prayer lord let thanksgiving be my lifestyle from today please pray talk to the lord from the depth of your heart let it not just be when the church is having her annual thanksgiving ceremony let it be that you live your entire life being thankful for some of you you need to return back home and say thank you thank you thank you you need to return and say thank you growing up I used to watch my parents do something that we were very very annoyed with as kids we had times of family prayer where we would come to pray and everyone would be having tons to pray and we dreaded the times where my father or mom would be the ones to take over because they would spend more than 15 minutes saying all kinds of thank you and as children we wondered summarize this and say thank you god god knows so my father would start by saying thank you thank you thank you thank you literally thank you and now we open our eyes and close it back what in the world is happening round up this prayer thank you thank you thank you then nagode nagode kai sayabo back to english thank you thank you and now we're watching getting impatient getting angry getting frustrated thank you lord what do we tell you thank you and my mother is about to take the button thank you thank you and then finally in jesus name then he gives my mother here's how my mother prays lord the other day when i passed the market and a car was almost hitting me were you not the one who was there she's praying and we're listening and then lord i was returning back if i died nobody would know hmm. lord and then she's praying and now we're watching and saying oh god just say thank you jesus how foolish and how childish they would say thank you thank you then sometimes when her voice begins to go dim we know that tears is about to come thank you thank you thank you thank you but now i've been the greatest campaigner of that kind of prayer thank you thank you thank you thanks thanks we give you thanks for all Sing with me. We are so blessed. And our souls have found rest. Oh Lord, we need you thanks. Is it all right if I pray and just speak over the congregation? Will that be fine? Hallelujah. Because every time we give thanks, we make room for more thanksgiving increases your capacity to receive so much and within the minute or two that i have left i just felt stirred in my heart to just pray and declare the blessing over someone perhaps there might be someone going through a health condition someone going through a very negative situation where you are trusting god for a miracle 
the church is where we find rest he says come unto me jesus is speaking all ye that are weary and heavy laden and he leaves you with an assurance that i will give you rest so whilst you are seated i want you to just receive this prayer let it be from the depth of your heart as i pray for you and it's in the name of jesus that we pray we give thanks we're praying because he's given jesus christ and now let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich because of what the lord has done for us give thanks father in the name of jesus here at this beautiful assembly in the presence of the pastor the reverend and the father over this assembly i stand in faith agreeing with all those who are giving thanks i pray that you accept our thanksgiving in the name of jesus and then i pray for as many here who are trusting god listen to me in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god if there be anything in your life that has been an impedance to your loving serving and praising jesus right now by the name that is above every other name let that mountain be brought low right now in the name of jesus i pray for every family here that has had a reason to cry this year i speak to you let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light i'm speaking words of hope no matter what it is let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light every hopeless situation we turn it around for your good now in the name of jesus and let me declare over your life whatever the lord told you in january this year that is yet to come to pass by november and many of you are saying lord is this how i will end the year let me speak to you that it will end in praise in the name of jesus christ for some of you between now and the celebration of christmas you will return even though it is not thanksgiving you will create a thanksgiving moment because of the mighty hand of god in the name of jesus i pray for all the nobles within your church i decree and declare that it will be for you from glory to glory i pray for every family here represented the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from your tent in the name of jesus christ and i declare for those who are saying the year has not been good may that proverb be never be heard in your family again anyone here who is struggling with any medical condition you're having any blood disease you're having probably sugar diabetes struggling with cancer struggling with um, arthritis any kind of ailment in the name of jesus that name that is above every other name i declare that right here in this atmosphere of thanksgiving let that infirmity leave your body now same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that conquered the earth lives in me lives in me therefore everything that has not been planted by my father in your body right now i decree and declare in the name of jesus equa my tama hear me in the name that is above all names i declare let that sickness die now let it leave your body in the name of jesus for many of you you will return back this week and check yourselves and it will be a wonder they will tell you you do not have that sickness again in the name of jesus let me pray for everyone here trusting god for a job you have struggled you have done everything you know to do 
in the name of Jesus standing upon the grace of our father here reverend in the name of Jesus I declare before this year ends may the Lord God whom you have served so graciously grant you a testimony and anyone here who is due promotion my Bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I declare you will hear good news even this week hallelujah I pray if I'm allowed to pray for all those who are involved in politics and governance I know that the church is rising to make a difference I decree and declare may the Lord strengthen you for those who are in diplomatic services of all sorts I decree and declare may the grace of God rest upon you for mothers here whether expecting mothers or those who are still trusting God for the miracle of the fruit of the womb you will never forget this day because this is the day that your miracle begins in the name of Jesus Christ and if there is any family here that is under the plague and the cause of the spirit of death we agree as a church in the name of Jesus oh grave where is your sting oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory we declare victory over death victory over the grave in the name of Jesus let me say this as I wrap up I am aware very honorably so that this church is active beyond measure in missions and evangelism in fact sincerely I want to lend my voice to commend this church and to honor you and to appreciate you to let you know that your work and your service for the gospel even from far is heard and known I am amazed at the passion and the drive I will hear of your benevolence and your lavish giving towards missions and evangelism and like Apostle Paul prayed I declare my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus we pray for all the mission arms that this church is involved with in the name of Jesus Christ the fruits that your seeds and your giving is part of may those fruits abide no one here will give for missions and have your children go to hell in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for anyone here who is struggling in your relationship with Jesus I am an advocate of passion for the things of God I am an advocate of the fact that regardless of your achievement in this life if Jesus Christ please listen to me if Jesus Christ is not genuinely Lord of your life something is seriously missing and for as many who are saying apostle pray for me I desire restoration in my spiritual life I release my faith with reverend and I pray for you let today be a new beginning in your